Many believe that this highly successful fly pattern should be banned. To start this pattern, we'll grab some UV orange beads, inserting it over our hook, and use a lighter in order to adhere it to the top of the fly. Be sure to lift it in an upward motion as to not close your hook gap. Additionally, be sure to fill this with a UV resin or super glue to make sure it stays in place. We will then grab some egg yarn. Here I'm using a pale white and secure that, taking thread wraps at the head of our fly. We'll snip it to length and pull away any loose fibers. We will then whip finish to hold everything in place, seat the knot, and snip it free. Finally, we will brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. The pattern is so simple and requires very little skill that many believe it should not be used in fly fishing. However, eggs are a natural forage and extremely productive at catching fish. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Most people don't know about this fly because of the one secret it holds. To tie it, we will grab some white Vivas thread, this is in 12 aught, and secure that to a Euro hook, snap the excess free, wrap back towards the head of our fly, and grab this blue squirmy worm material. Now you've seen this fly before, but this material has a secret that I will show you at the end of the video. Secure the squirmy worm to the head of the fly. Do this by taking some loose wraps to begin with and wrapping tighter and tighter as you go. Once secure, pull the squirmy worm material to the side and snip free. We will then whip finish to hold everything in place for our next step. Snip the thread free and grab a tungsten bead. We will insert this euro bead backwards with the slotted end facing forward and slide it up to the head of our fly. This provides a slot for the silicone worm to sit in line with the hook shank. Measure out another piece of the squirmy worm to match the head of the fly and tie that onto the back of our hook shank. Secure, snip free, and create a nice smooth transition towards the head of our fly. We will then grab more squirmy worm material and attach this to the back of our fly. Secure it tightly, snip the excess free, and once again, we will create a smooth transition to the head of our fly. We can begin wrapping the squirmy worm material forward to the head of our fly. Do this by taking loose wraps forward, using your finger to hold it in place. If the wraps are too tight, a single fish's tooth will destroy this body in no time. But if you take loose wraps, it will withstand a few more. Once at the head of the fly, we will secure taking wraps both in front as well as behind our squirmy worm material and snip free. Whip finish to secure everything in place, seat the knot tightly and snip it free. The squirmy worm is a highly successful fly pattern that has proven itself over the years. Best fish in high waters after a rainfall event, this tungsten bead will help you sink down there and get noticed because of its one little secret. It glows in the dark, helping it stand out in these turbid waters. If you want to try this fly out for yourself but don't tie, you can visit my website and submit a custom order. Thank you guys for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you want to catch more fish, today's fly is for you. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC in fluorescent pink, secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess free. Continue to the bend of the hook, grabbing some pink squirmy worm material. We'll secure this tightly to the back of the fly, wrapping towards the bead. Flatten the body out as much as you can, but don't worry about it too much because we'll be covering it in our next step. Once we're happy with how the tail looks, grab a second piece of squirmy worm material, tying it on the body of your fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, return your thread to the head of the fly, and begin wrapping your squirmy worm material in loose spirals. Pulling the material too tight can result in it falling apart after the first fish. Once you reach your thread, secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. We will then whip finish to hold it in place. If you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies below, and if you would like to support the channel and purchase a few, you can visit my website. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be tying up one of my favorite variations of the Golden Retriever. Now, this is going to be a longer format video for those who want to follow along. We're going to be using a 3x hook. This is in size six, and it's paired with a fire hole stone five 30 seconds bead. We're gonna use some flat ultra thread 140 in black. This is definitely my favorite thread to tie with for any streamer. And we're gonna wrap up to the front and use a lead free wire to help secure this bead in place so it's not 
spinning around the hook when we're finished with this fly. Once we get that secure, you can just helicopter it free and then wrap our thread all the way to the back of the hook shank. Now we're going to grab some olive marabou and I like to use the tips because all this fine feathers that we have adds a lot of action to the fly. We're going to measure that out to be about one and a half times the hook length. If you go much further than that, it can get wrapped up in the hook. Secure our feather to the hook, fold over the marabou, and then wrap our thread all the way to the front, fold the marabou back over, and then secure at the head of the fly. This is just going to help us build up a body. So once we get that tied down, we're going to snip that excess free and then try to get all these feathers to lay flat. Next up, we're going to grab some crystal flash. This is in olive, but orange also looks really good with this olive pattern as well. Secure that to the hook. And then fold it over and secure it on the other side. That way we only have to use these four strands to do both sides. We're going to secure it down a little bit tighter. And then we're going to snip it to length and we want it to be a little bit longer than our marabou. Next up, we're going to grab some UV Estaz. And I like to trim off the tips of it, and that way we can just secure the braided line of it straight to the fly. Now that we're done with that, we want to create a nice uniform body. So we're going to wrap our thread around our hook shank until we completely cover any visible feathers, braided line, or anything like that and try to keep it as uniform as possible. If you want to add a taper to it, a lot of people like their golden retrievers tied like that. Personally, I like mine to be nice and uniform and it's kind of thin. I think it adds a good profile to the fly. Now, once you're happy with your body, we can move on to the next part. So we're gonna grab our staz and we're gonna start to wrap that up the fly. Now you wanna keep some of this black underbody visible. So we're gonna give it a little bit of space in between. And on each wrap, we're gonna grab the staz and start to pull it backwards. So we're not trapping any of the fibers underneath it. Now, once we reach that point and you're happy with your wraps, you can grab your thread and secure that just behind the head and then snip it free. Grab a whip finisher and we can use this to create a band around the head of the fly. You can use as many or as few wraps as you want as long as you use enough to secure it, about six to eight wraps. I like my band to stand out a little bit. I think it's a, a cool little addition to this fly. Once that's secure, we'll snip it free and then we can trim any fibers that are sticking out past the head to add a little bit of a rounded shape towards the back of the fly. And then once we're happy with everything, grab a little bit of head cement, a little bit goes a long way, and then use this to make sure our thread wraps are going to stay in place. And there you go, this is my variation of a golden retriever. It's a excellent fly pattern that I have had a ton of luck with. And if you're not a fly tire and want to try this for yourself, you can go to my website that's going to be linked down below, submit a custom order form, and I'd be happy to send some your way. So thanks for watching guys and good luck out on the water. We're going to be tying one of the earliest known styles of fly. It was first recorded over 500 years ago and still catches fish. For starters, we're going to use some orange thread. Here I'm using a Vivas in size 16 aught. Pull the excess free and grab some amber brassy wire. We'll snip off a small section and attach that to our hook shank. Secure tightly and wrap it back well into the bend of the hook. Once complete, we will start creating a transition towards the head of our fly. One of the easiest ways to do this is to wrap your thread to the head of the fly, proceed to wrap back towards the bend and stop just short of where you did previously. Continue to do this several times until you reach the head of the fly once again. Once we're happy with our body transition, we'll grab our brassy wire and wrap in open spirals to the head of our fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our brassy wire. 
and helicopter the excess free. Wrap back slightly onto the body and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a orange synthetic as well as a hare's ear. We'll blend these together, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap that around the body of our fly. Next, I like to brush this out, giving it a nice buggy look, pulling the excess free, and grabbing a partridge feather. We will pull back the fibers slightly, leaving a small triangle, snip that free, and use it to attach it to the head of our fly. We will then hackle this partridge feather around the head, secure it tightly, and snip the excess free. Pull the fibers backwards and wrap onto them slightly, giving them a brushed back look. Next, we can whip finish, holding everything in place. Snip free, burn off any excess fibers, and use some UV resin to add durability. This is a modern variation of the classic soft hackle partridge in orange. While the pattern is over 500 years old, it still catches fish. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you go down below. And if you want to see more just like it, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. This productive pattern was banned for use in competitions. And today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll secure some white thread to the hook shank and snap the excess free. We'll prevent our bead from spinning around the hook by inserting some lead free wire, securing it, and helicoptering the excess free. Lay down a thread base until you reach your hook point. We'll then grab my new favorite mop material called Galaxy Mop. You can pick it up from the JStockard website for 15% off using the code above. This particular one is in tan. Secure the mop material tightly to the top of your hook shank, and if you want it to be extra secured, you can add some super glue. Snip your galaxy mop to length and wrap your thread to the head of the fly. Here, we'll fold over our thread, create a loop, and wrap it back towards the mop material. Return your thread to the head of the fly, leaving us with this dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a laser dubbing in tan. Insert it into our dubbing loop and spin it up. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll wrap our dubbing up the body until we reach the thread. Secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Finish it off by brushing it out to give it an extra buggy look. And this is the Galaxy Mop, one of my new favorite variations of the mop fly to fish. You can pick up all the materials needed to tie this fly by clicking the JStockard link below. Additionally, JStockard has provided a $25 gift card to one lucky winner. To win, comment hashtag JStockard in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a secret that fly tires don't want you to know. But to start, we'll grab some orange thread and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping your thread to the back of the hook and create a thread dam that'll be important for our next step. Once complete, grab some brown biots, strip off two and place them in a V formation. We'll measure them to be about the length of the hook shank and secure them to the back of the fly. The thread buildup will help display them out. Secure the biots tightly and begin wrapping towards the bead. Once complete, snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into the bead, secure it tightly and wrap back towards the tail. Next, we'll grab one of my favorite dubbing blends. You can find it in the links below. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it around our hook shank, building up a taper as we work towards the head of the fly. Take your time with this and tighten the dubbing noodle as needed. Now remember, start with a little bit because you can always add more. Next, we'll grab our wire and begin wrapping in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure tightly taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. And then we'll brush out the body to give this fly a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and add a very loose dubbing noodle, wrapping this just around the head of the fly. Pull everything back and add a couple thread wraps in front. With this complete, brush it out once again to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a fly called Scruffy. And while it may not look pretty, I prefer fishing these buggy flies. So remember, if you're new to fly tying, don't get discouraged by seeing someone's pretty fly because a fly like this is likely to catch more fish anyway. Subscribe for more and I will see you 
in the next one. This fly resulted in catching my largest steelhead to date, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. To start this fly, we'll use some beavis in orange, bring your thread to the head of the fly, and insert a lead-free wire. This step will help secure our tungsten bead in place. Helicopter the excess free, and continue wrapping into the bend of the hook. We'll then start to build up a small thread dam, and we will use this in our next step. Grab some brown biots, select two biots and put them into a V shape, securing them to the back of the fly. We'll take time to wrap back into the thread dam we just created. This will result in helping to splay out our biots in a V shape. We will then further secure our biots and start to build up a body transition. We'll then grab some hot orange brassy wire, securing it tightly to the hook shank and wrapping back towards our biots. We will then grab a orange vinyl D-rib, secure this to our body, wrapping back towards our biots. With this step complete, we will take the time to build up a nice smooth thread transition and begin wrapping our vinyl D-rib forward in closed touching spirals. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. We will then grab our brassy wire, wrapping it forward until we reach our thread. Secure tightly, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. Next, we'll select a small piece of uni mylar. This one is in pearl and secure it to the top of our fly, wrapping back onto our vinyl ribbing. Then we'll grab a turkey tail, select about a quarter to a half inch section, securing it above our mylar. We will then grab some orange silicon legs, attaching them to either side of our fly and securing it tightly. Once complete, we'll use our scissors to snip them to length. We will then grab some dubbing. Here I'm using some orange ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap this tightly around our body, being careful not to trap the legs in the process. Continue wrapping your dubbing until you reach the head of the fly. Fold over our turkey tail, secure it, followed by our mylar. Once secure, we'll snip them free and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snipping your thread free once complete, we will grab some UV resin and paint this over the back of our fly. This step will add durability but also give our fly pattern a nice shine. Once happy, we will secure it in place with a UV light and finally brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Many people ask if I would show the fish that I catch with these on the channel. While I don't show that here, you can find that on my other channel linked here. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be creating a cased caddis. We'll start off with some vivas thread. This is 12 aught in black. Attach that to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. We'll then insert a lead free wire into our bead to help fix it in place. Secure it tightly to the hook shank and helicopter free. We will then build up a thread dam just behind our lead free wire and create a thread base wrapping into the bend of our hook. Return the thread to the head of your fly and whip finish cutting the thread free. We're going to grab some five minute epoxy. Now I like to use this JB weld in clear, mix it together and then paint it over the body of our fly, leaving a bit of room towards the head. Today is also our 20,000 subscriber giveaway. For your chance to win, you can check the description below. Once we're happy with our epoxy, we're gonna grab some rocks and sprinkle them onto the top of the epoxy. We'll repeat this process until the body is completely covered or cased in these rocks. Then set it aside and let the resin fix. Once the resin is fixed in place, we will reattach our thread to the head of the fly 
and snap the excess free. Grab some olive hairs ear dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap this right along the rock casing that we just created, making sure to leave some room at the head of the fly for our next steps. Once happy, we'll grab our dubbing brush, brush this free, giving it a nice buggy look, and grab a turkey tail. We'll select about six to eight fibers and measure them out to reach our hook point. Transfer the measurement and secure the turkey tail in place, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. To give them a better look, we'll grab a pair of tweezers and push these back up against our bead. If done properly, it'll make these turkey tails look a little more like legs. Grab some more olive dubbing and use that to finish the head of the fly, pushing our legs back as well. Whip finish, snip our thread free, and brush it out to give it a buggy look. And that is the rock cased caddis. This fly sinks like a rock and fish love it. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be tying a white maggot. We'll start off with some vivas thread. Here I'm using black. Secure tightly and pull the excess free. We'll then wrap well into the bend of our hook creating a thread base for the next steps. Return your thread just above the hook point and grab some white beavis. Secure tightly to your hook shank, wrapping back into the bend of the hook. Once secured, return your thread back to the head of the fly and grab a rubber band. We will secure it just behind the hook eye, leaving some room for our finishing step. Secure the rubber band tightly and then stretch it out to wrap it into the bend of our hook. Take further securing wraps wrapping towards the head of the fly. Once complete, we will start to wrap our rubber band forward. We'll overlap the previous wraps that will provide a transition towards the head of the fly but also give it a nice segmented look. Once we reach the head of the fly, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front and behind, and then snipping it free. Further secure the tag end so it doesn't slip free, and start to build up the head of our fly. Once happy, we'll grab our Vivas thread, and we will use this to wrap over the segments that we just created, giving it a nice, natural, rounded look. Once we reach the head of the fly, we will secure the thread and snip free. Whip finish, snip your thread free and grab some UV resin. We'll paint this over the entire fly. Not only will this add durability, but it will also give it a glossy look. This is an excellent pattern to use for just about any fish. If you'd like to win this fly, you can comment hashtag flies below for your chance to win. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of my most used stonefly nymphs, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll start off with some black thread and snip the excess free. Insert some lead-free wire into the bead, secure it, and helicopter the excess free. We'll then continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. and build up a thread dam for our next step. With this complete, we'll grab some biots. Here I like to use brown to add a bit of contrast. Place them in a V formation, securing them to the back of the fly. Wrap back slightly onto your thread dam that'll help splay the tails apart. Continue to secure the biot stems to the hook shank and begin building up a body transition slightly past the hook point. This will build up bulk and give the tail section a better look. With this complete, we'll grab some medium black vinyl, secure it to the hook shank and wrap back towards the tail. Return your thread forward and begin wrapping the vinyl forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. Once complete, secure, taking several thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and snipping the excess free. 
Secure your tag end in place and whip finish, cutting your thread free. We'll swap out to a smaller thread for these next steps. Secure it to the head of the fly, snap the excess free, and grab a small piece of thin skin. Secure it to the top of your fly and wrap back towards your vinyl. Next, grab the dubbing of your choice. Here I'm using a copper ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle. Begin by wrapping just in front of your vinyl and finishing with your thread slightly in front. Grab a single biot and secure it to the side of your fly. The dubbing ball will help push it out, measuring this one to length to be about the size of our vinyl body. Do the same to the other side and snip the excess free. We'll create another dubbing noodle, again using our copper dubbing and wrap this just in front of our biots. Once complete, we'll fold over our thin skin, secure it tightly in place, folding it back over on itself and securing once again. With this complete, we'll repeat the previous steps two more times, bringing us to the head of the fly for a total of six legs. With this complete, you can snip your thin skin free and whip finish to hold it all in place. Next, we'll add a generous amount of UV resin, starting just slightly onto our vinyl ribbing, over the top of the thin skin, and then slightly onto the head of the fly. Fix in place with the UV light, and brush the legs free to give it a nice, buggy look. If you want to take an extra step, you can fold the legs over, pressing them with a pair of pliers in order to give them an extra buggy look. And this is the Vinyl Stonefly. Its sleek, streamlined nature helps it sink quickly in the water, but it also has an excellent profile. You can find it on my website listed below. And if you'd like to win this one, or I'll throw in six. If you'd like to win six of these, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly is so successful that it was actually banned from competition fishing. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, attach that to our hook, and insert a lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place. Secure it to the hook shank, and helicopter free. We can then build up a small thread dam behind our thread and wrap to the head of the fly. We'll grab our mop material, and attach that to the head of the fly. We'll do so by taking several tight thread wraps to fix it in place. Once complete, we'll snip it to about two hook shanks in length, snipping it free by rounding off the tail. Next, we'll grab synthetic peacock and hair's ear dubbing, blend these together, and create a dubbing noodle around our thread. We can then start wrapping this around the head of the fly, we want to build up a fairly prominent base of dubbing, so if you run out, you can always add some more. Once complete, we will brush it out, giving it a nice buggy look. Secure by whip finishing and snipping your thread free. The mop fly is a very easy and extremely productive pattern. I've created some fly kits, so if you want to try this exact pattern, as well as another one, you can check that out in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Tired of throwing away your squirmy worms? Well, this pattern is for you. We'll start with some flat black thread, attach it to our hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Continue wrapping to the bend of the hook and grab some squirmy worm material. Here I've selected to use this light blue color glows in the dark. Secure the material in place by taking some loose thread wraps at first and beginning to wrap tighter and tighter to secure it to the hook shank. This will help prevent your thread from cutting through the material, ruining your fly. Snip your squirmy worm material to length and select some medium green wire. Insert this into your bead and secure it tightly, wrapping back towards our tail. We'll then select a dubbing blend. Here I've used chartreuse, green, and copper ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this up your fly, creating transition towards the bead. You can tighten your dubbing and add more material as needed. We'll stop just short of the bead, grab our wire and begin to counter wrap in open spirals till we reach our thread. This will help further secure the dubbing in place. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess furry. For the head of the fly, I've selected some black hair's ear and peacock ice dubbing. 
blend these two materials, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap this around the head of your fly. Once complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. This fly is excellent at catching fish, but still functions as a great caddis pattern once the tail is lost. Highly suggest stocking up on a few of these, as they can be a great chimeric fly. You can find them on my website listed below, and if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one. This fly was banned in the 1800s for being too successful. To start this pattern, we'll grab some black UTC, secure that to our hook shank, snipping the excess free. Continue wrapping to the back of the hook and grab a yellow goose feather. We will select about a quarter inch segment and measure it to be about half our hook shank in length. Fix our feather in place on the back of our hook and continue to secure it, wrapping forward towards the head of our fly. This will help us build up a nice uniform body. Snip the excess free, and then grab some gold wire. We will secure this to our hook shank at the head of the fly and wrap it back towards the tail. We will then grab some silver tinsel, tie it into the back of our fly, and wrap forward towards the hook eye. Once complete, we will wrap our silver tinsel in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. We want to make sure that each wrap is slightly overlapping the last. Secure. And snip the excess free. We will then begin to wrap our gold wire in open spirals towards the head of our fly, taking care to make sure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front and behind and helicoptering the excess free. We will grab a black rooster cape, we'll select a single feather, stripping the excess free and tying it onto the head of our fly. Snip the excess stem free and begin to hackle our feather around the head of the fly. It will take about four to five turns. Secure the excess and snip free. Brush your hackled feathers backwards and use your thread to wrap back on them slightly. This will give them a nice brush back look. We will then grab a peacock sword, select two sections of feathers and tie them onto the head of our fly. The length will roughly reach the end of the tail and we will secure it tightly in place. Snip the excess free and grab some more yellow goose feathers. We will tie these onto either side of our fly, securing tightly and snipping the excess free. Whip finish and paint some UV resin over the head of our fly. Once happy, we'll fix in place, and this is a variation of the Great Alexander fly. If you'd like to win this fly, we're going to be giving away in our Discord community. The details will be in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Fish love boobies so much that many fishermen would like to see this fly banned. We'll start this pattern with some fluorescent yellow thread. Secure it tightly to your hook shank and snip the excess free. We will then continue wrapping into the bend of our hook. Once complete, we'll grab some chartreuse marabou, measure it to be about the size of our hook shank, and secure it to the back of the fly. Take further securing wraps up the fly, folding the marabou over, wrapping our thread to the head of the fly. Fold your marabou back over and secure it tightly in place. This will not only help further secure our marabou, but also build up a body. Snip the excess free, using your thread to cover any remaining marabou. Next, we will grab some chartreuse brassy wire. Secure this to the hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Return your thread to the head of the fly, and grab some pearl mylar. Once again, securing it tightly to our hook shank and wrapping back towards the tail. We will then use our thread to build up a uniformed body, finishing at the head of the fly. Next, grab your mylar and start wrapping it in closed spirals up the fly, continuing to do so until we reach our thread. at which point we will secure, taking several thread wraps over our mylar and snipping the excess free. 
We will then grab our chartreuse brassy wire and start to wrap this up in open spirals towards the head of our fly. Try to maintain an even distance between each wrap. Secure and helicopter the excess free. In order to add some shine and durability, we will paint over our body with some UV resin, securing it with a UV light once happy. We will now grab some black marabou, measure this to equal the length of our tail, securing it in place just behind the eye of our hook, leaving a bit of room for our next step. We will snip the excess free and lay down a thread base in order to hold our boobies in place. Grab some round booby eyes, here I'm using chartreuse, and secure these to the head of the fly by using your thread to wrap tightly in figure eight patterns. With the boobies secured in place, we will use our whip finisher, taking several turns to prevent the fly from falling apart. Seat the knot tightly and snip free. If you want to read more about the controversy of the booby fly, you can check out the comments below. And if you'd like to win it, comment hashtag flies for your chance to win this booby fly. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be creating a dragonfly out of this foam. To start, I like to use this poor man's tube vise by taking this cap out of an adhesive bottle and securing it to the vise. Cut a quarter inch section of your blue foam and slide it over the needle. This solution isn't the best fix, but it does the trick. We'll then grab some black thread, secure it over the foam and cinch it down tightly. We'll then take several thread wraps to make a segmentation and whip finish to hold it in place. The first few whip finishes will be a little bit of a struggle to keep the foam out of the way, but you can just use your fingers to rotate it around. Seat the knot tightly and snip the excess free. We'll continue this process, creating another segmentation every quarter inch, continuing to do so until we reach the edge of our needle. Once complete, we'll slide it off the needle and if you've done it tight enough, everything should hold together nicely. Here I'm using a size 10 terrestrial hook and secure some white thread to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards the bend. Snip your excess furry and continue wrapping until you reach the hook point. We'll then grab some dubbing. I like to use this ice dubbing in Blue Done and begin wrapping this up the hook shank in closed touching spirals. This is gonna create a base for the next steps. We'll then add our extended tail to the back of the fly and secure it tightly with our thread. The dubbing will keep it from spinning in circles. Fold the excess backwards and secure, wrapping the thread on top of it. Add a bit more dubbing and wrap it slightly up the body. We'll fold our foam back over and secure it tightly to add another segmentation. Secure tightly and repeat the process of folding it backwards, securing and adding a bit more dubbing, and dub backwards until we reach the foam. At which point, we'll create the wings. Here I've selected a cool material, it's called web wings. Here, we're using the molted medium done, and you can use the code above to pick it up on the JSTOCKERD website for 15% off. We'll cut these out to resemble a dragonfly's wing and secure them to the top of the fly. We'll carefully secure each wing individually. This can be tricky and take your time to make sure that the wing is oriented in the proper position. We'll have the back ones facing out towards hook shank slightly, securing them both tightly and grabbing some more dubbing to help position them in place. Feel free to do this as many times as you'd like to make sure you're happy with their orientation. Next, we'll simply repeat this process, this time with the wings facing forward, and creating another dubbing noodle to cover our thread and help position the wings, finishing just behind the hook eye. Once we're happy with our wings, we'll fold over the blue foam and secure it tightly. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and trim the foam in a rounded shape. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a blue damsel dragonfly. This pattern requires a lot of work, but is very fun to have in your fly box. If you'd like to win this fly and a $25 gift certificate to Jay Stockard, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'm gonna to be fixing a band fly pattern so that a client can use it in their home waters. We're gonna grab some thread in a light yellow color, secure it to our hook shank. We'll then grab some ginger or cream marabou, measure it to be a bit longer than our hook shank and secure it to the back of the fly. Once secure, fold over your marabou 
Wrap your thread forward, folding your marabou back over and securing it to the head of the fly. Snip the excess free and secure it tightly to the hook shank. Grab some angel hair, you can find it in the links below. Secure it to one side of our fly, fold it over and secure it to the other. Position them so they're oriented toward the upper side of the fly. Secure tightly and snip it to length. Next, we'll grab some gold wire, this in size medium. Secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Once secured, set it aside and create yourself a custom dubbing blend. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it around your hook shank in closed touching spirals. Take your time with this and tighten as needed and build up a smooth transition towards the head of the fly, adding more dubbing as needed. With this step complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Brush everything back and grab a feather that we can use to palmer the body. Strip some of the excess fibers free and secure it to the head of the fly. Snip your excess free. Begin palmering your feather around the body until we reach the tail, doing so in open spirals. Grab your gold wire and use that to secure the feather in place. We'll counter wrap with the gold wire up the body, securing our feather in place as well as adding some durability. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. If you've missed a couple feathers like me, I like to use a lighter to clean up the head. Snip your excess free and grab a hen cape. Here I'm using a light beige color. Select a single fiber and snip off the tip, leaving a small triangle that we can use to tie on to the fly. Secure tightly and begin to hackle your feather around the head of the fly, brushing the feathers back as you go and doing it in closed touching spirals. Once complete, use your thread to secure in place, brush everything back and use your thread to give it a nice brush back look. Snip your excess free and continue to clean up the head until you're happy. Whip finishing once complete. Snip your thread free and this is the Vanilla Ice Bugger. Generally, this pattern is tied with a cone head. However, this dozen I'm tying up is on its way to a river in Canada, where it is in fact banned to use anything with weight. This is an excellent color that will also work well in my home waters for landlocked salmon. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be creating a glass shrimp. To start this pattern, we'll grab some white UTC and secure that to our hook shank. Here we'll be using a special curved hook made by Anthrax. Snip your excess thread free and continue wrapping into the bend of the hook. We'll then grab some white craft fur, select a small pinch and secure it to the back of the fly. We'll then snip the excess free, secure it down and grab a pair of monofilament eyes. Here I've painted the ends black, securing it tightly to the back of the fly. We will then select about four strands of pearl or white flashaboo. Secure it to either side of our fly and snip the excess free, leaving it about as long as our hook shank. We will then grab some pearl angel hair and secure this just above our craft fur. This will add a little bit of flash and texture to our pattern. You can use your scissors to trim it down. And once happy, snip the excess free. We will then grab some white silicone legs and secure this to each side of our hook. Once complete, snip the excess free and trim the legs to length. To create a bend in our legs, simply add one overhand knot, pull it tight, and this will give it a leg-like appearance. Secure the silicone leg to the other side and trim it to length. We will then grab some UV Estaz in white, secure this to the back of the fly, bringing our thread forward. Begin wrapping the Estaz up the body in closed spirals. Secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. For the back of our fly, we will use a piece of thin skin trimmed to shape. Secure to the back of the fly 
and then use another small piece of thin skin to simulate a tail, securing it over the hook eye. With this complete, we can whip finish and snip our thread free, folding over our thin skin and reattaching our thread at the head of the fly. Snip the excess free and fold over your thin skin to secure it in place, being careful not to trap any fibers in the process. One way to prevent trapping fibers is to move your thread back and forth to prevent from trapping any underneath. Continue securing the thin skin and create a ribbing until we reach the head of the fly. We will whip finish, holding everything in place and snipping our thread free. Brush out any trapped fibers and trim the estaz to length. Next, we will grab some UV resin. This one in particular is my favorite. Begin adding the UV resin in small layers over the back of our fly and securing it with a UV light. And we will continue adding layers until we are happy with the final product. And this is a realistic shrimp pattern. It can be tied in a variety of colors and has a lifelike appearance in the water. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is a fly that's very popular in my home waters, but relatively unknown everywhere else. We'll start this pattern by grabbing some red UTC and securing it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and continue wrapping your thread to the bend of the hook. We will then grab some ginger marabou, securing it tightly to the back of the fly. In order to build up the body, we'll fold over the marabou, wrap our thread forward, and then fold the marabou back towards the bead, securing it in place. Further secure the marabou to your hook shank, and this is a quick way to build up a body. Snip the excess free and grab some gold estaz. Pulling off the tips, exposing the braided line, and secure it to the back of the fly. Once complete, we will start to wrap our thread forward, taking time to completely cover any exposed feathers. This is a key step in producing this pattern. Once complete, we will grab our gold estaz and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals, using your fingers to pull the estaz backwards each wrap to ensure you don't trap any underneath. Once at the bead, we will secure the estaz in place, taking wraps both in front and behind, snipping the excess free. We can then grab a whip finisher and build up a prominent band at the head of our fly. This is a hot spot that's very characteristic of this pattern. And this is the Golden Retriever. Originally invented for panfish, it is also extremely successful for trout and salmon. If you'd like to try this fly, but don't tie yourself, you can visit my website listed below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. You have to try this productive springtime trout streamer. To start, we'll grab some black thread here I'm using 6 aught cure it to our hook shank, and lay down a thread base for our next steps. We'll then grab some wire and a stinger hook. Here I'm using a size 8, which I find perfect for most trout. Measure it to length, keeping it about the size of our hook shank, and using our thread to secure it tightly. Wrap up towards the hook eye, folding your wire over, and securing it back towards the hook. This will help ensure that it stays in place. Snip your wire free using the back end of your scissors and carefully secure the tag ends to the hook shank. Once complete, we'll whip finish and snip our thread free, swapping it out for a smaller yet durable 70 denier UTC. Secure it to your hook shank, snip the excess free and continue wrapping down the hook shank a bit further than we left off. Once complete, bring your thread forward and create a dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some fluorescent pink ice dubbing, straightening out the fibers by using your fingers to separate them, pinch them back together, and continuing this process until they lay flat, at which point we'll insert them into our dubbing loop, space it out with your fingers, and use your fingers or a weighted tool to help spin it up, and brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. 
With this complete, we'll begin wrapping it around our hook shank, brushing back any fibers to ensure that we don't trap it underneath. Continue this process about halfway up the hook shank. Once complete, use your thread to secure the dubbing loop in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Grab your dubbing brush, brush out any trapped fibers, and of course, give it a nice buggy look. With this complete, wrap back on your dubbing slightly to help brush it back. Also, one simple trick with these intruders is to take a piece of foam and stick it over the hook eye so your materials or fingers don't get stuck in it. We'll then create another dubbing loop just in front of our pink dubbing ball, grabbing some white ice dubbing, UV white larval lace, and a little more pink ice dubbing. Create another dubbing blend and slide this up our dubbing loop, spinning it up and brushing it free just as we did before. With this complete, we'll carefully begin to wrap it forward in close touching spirals, brushing back any fibers to ensure we don't trap them. We'll continue about three thirds of the way up the hook. And if you have a little too much dubbing, you can secure it early and snip the excess free. Brushing everything back and taking a few thread wraps on top of it to give it a nice brush bath look. Brush any trapped fibers free. Next, we'll grab some lateral scales. Here I'm using a pearl. Secure it to one side. folding the excess over and securing it to the opposite. We'll trim these to length to reach a little bit past our hook. Next, we'll grab some white marabou, brush the fibers backwards and snip the tip free, leaving us with a small tie-in point. Secure to your hook shank and begin to palmer it up the body. Once again, being sure to brush all the fibers backwards to give it a better look. Typically, I like to do about two to three turns, depending on the look you're going for. Once happy, use your thread to secure the marabou in place and snip the excess free. Brushing all your fibers backwards and wrapping on top of it to help give it that brush back look. We'll then grab a grizzly saddle hackle, grab two fibers and secure them to the upper portion of our fly. I find it's usually easiest to start with one and then tie in the second. Secure them tightly and snip the excess free. We'll then grab a mallard flank. For this pattern, I prefer to use the slightly darker ones that have a little bit of brown in them. However, it's hard to find them sold like this, so either go into a fly shop and find what you're looking for, but if not, you can always swipe it out for a white alternative. Secure it to the head of the fly, and begin to wrap this forward, once again, about two to three turns. Brushing the fibers back as you go, and laying the stem just in front of the previous wrap. Once happy, use your thread to secure and snip the excess free. Carefully cover up your tag end and build up a small head section, wrapping back on the mallard flank slightly. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Seat your knot and snip your thread free and brush it out to help separate your mallard flank and give it that nice buggy look. Clean up the head and add durability by panning it over with some UV resin. Fix in place with a UV light, and this is a micro intruder pattern that I created to imitate our local springtime smelt. It's a great pattern that I had a lot of success on last year. I'd give this one away, but I'm trying to fill up my fly box before the season starts. Now remember, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can pick up some flies on my website or submit a custom order form. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to tie up a unique pattern that was inspired by the Prince Nymph. To start, we'll grab some white thread, attach it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. We'll then insert some lead-free wire, secure it with our thread, and helicopter the excess free. Continue wrapping to the bend of the hook and grab a peacock sword. We'll strip off a few feathers and secure them to the back of the fly. Secure tightly and wrap your thread towards the bead. Snip the excess free and grab some gold wire. Here I'm using size small. Insert the gold wire into the bead and secure it tightly, wrapping back towards the tail. 
and grab our peacock sword. But instead, we'll be using this hurl that's located on the bottom of your feather. This hurl's thinner and makes a great ribbing. We'll secure it to the back of the fly, snip the excess free, and begin wrapping your thread towards the bead, building up a smooth body transition in the process. Once complete, grab your peacock curl and begin palmering it up the body, doing so in open spirals and trying to keep them evenly spaced. Once you reach your thread, secure and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab our gold wire and begin counter wrapping up the body until we reach our thread. This will help provide durability for our delicate peacock curl. Secure tightly and helicopter the excess furry. We'll then grab our peacock sword again, strip off a few fibers, and secure them to the head of the fly. Once complete, we can begin hackling this around the head of our fly. If you have one, you can do this with a rotary vise, but if not, you can simply do it by hand. Secure, and snip the excess furry. With this complete, we'll rotate our fly around and grab some cream-colored biots. Position them in a V formation and secure them loosely to the head of the fly. This way, you can manipulate the fibers to face out splaying away from each other. Once happy, secure tightly and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using the color Hair's Ear and wrap it over the top of our bio. Once complete, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a fly I like to call the Prince's Sword. I've had decent success using this as an attractor pattern and would love to hear how you guys do with it. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. To start this pattern, we'll add some wraps of lead-free wire just behind the bead. Snip the tag ends free with an old pair of scissors and use your thread to secure it in place. Here I'm using ADOT Uni Thread in black, creating a thread damp behind it and wrapping into the bend of our hook. Here we'll create a small buildup of thread. Grab some black biots. We'll pull off two and tie them onto the back of our fly. Secure it in place, wrapping up towards the lead-free wire to help create a transition to that of our fly. Snip the excess free and grab some small green wire. We'll secure that to our hook shank and wrap it down towards the tail of our fly. Next, we'll grab a piece of mylar and secure that to the hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, we'll bring our thread to the head of the fly, grab our mylar, and start wrapping it up in closed spirals to the head of the fly. Secure it in place with our thread, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. So we'll grab our small green wire and wrap this up in open spirals towards the head of our fly. This will help add durability as well as a segmented look. Secure it in place and helicopter free. We'll then take some UV resin and paint this over our body. This will not only add some shine to our pattern, but also increase its durability. Once happy, we can fix in place with a UV light and grab some olive synthetic dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap this slightly onto our mylar, leaving some room at the head for the next steps. Brush it out to give it a nice buggy look pull the excess free, and then grab some white biots. We will pull free two feathers and put them into a V-shape and tie them onto the head of the fly. Secure it in place. Snip the excess free, and then grab some more olive dubbing to completely cover the thread wraps towards the head of the fly. Now we can whip finish holding everything in place 
Snip the excess free. This attractor pattern looks like no insect in particular, but trout love it. If you want to win this fly, you can go into the comment section below and type hashtag flies for your chance to win. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If there are brook trout where you fish, this is a must have streamer. To start this pattern, we'll grab some ultra thread in 140 in fluorescent orange and secure it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook. Next, we will grab a golden pheasant cape, select a single feather and secure it to the back of the fly. Continue securing it to our hook shank, fold the excess over, and wrap up towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our excess back over and secure it tightly to the head of the fly, snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some brassy wire, here I'm using hot orange. Secure this to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, we will return our thread to the head of the fly, grabbing some peacock curl. We'll select about four fibers, secure them to the head of the fly, once again wrapping them back towards the tail. Once complete, we'll use our thread to completely cover any visible feathers as we wrap up towards the head of the fly. If you'd like, you can secure some floss to the body to accomplish the same thing. However, I prefer to use thread. Once the body is built up and we've reached the head of our fly, grab your peacock curl, folding it over the back of our fly and securing it tightly in place. Snip the excess free and grab your brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly. If your peacock curl begins to twist in the process, just simply push it back into place and continue securing with your wire. Take your time with this step and try to make sure the wire is evenly spaced. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. We will whip finish, snipping our orange thread free. We will then grab some ultra thread in black, securing this to the head of our fly. Snip your excess free and grab a white bucktail. Select a small clump of fur about the size of your streamer and secure it tightly to the head of our fly. To do so, we'll take a loop around the fur prior to tightening it down on the head of the fly. This will help prevent the deer hair from spinning around our hook. With the deer hair secure, we'll tighten it down and snip the excess furry. Cover any exposed fur and take your time not to build up too much thread. Next, we will grab some red feathers selecting a small clump and tying it onto the throat of our fly. Secure tightly, snip the excess free, and grab a white goose feather. Cut a small portion free and tie it onto the bottom of our fly. With it lightly secured, we can move it to where we would like it to be and secure it tightly. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place. And this is a baby brook trout. I like to use this pattern most in backcountry brook trout ponds. However, it also works well anywhere you find brook trout and in the fall. If you'd like to support the channel and try this fly, you can visit my website below or submit a custom order. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This highly successful fly pattern might trigger some fly fishers. To tie it, we'll start off with this Vivis body quill, secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Wrap back up towards the hook eye and grab some vinyl ribbing. Here we're using a nymph size in red. Secure a small section to the hook shank ensuring that it's resting on top of the hook. Continue to secure tightly just on top of our thread wraps. Once complete, grab your whip finisher and secure everything in place. Snip the excess furry and grab some UV resin to paint over the body section. This will increase the durability and give the pattern a little bit of shine. Once happy, secure in place with a UV light 
and pinch the vinyl ribbing together to give it some character. And this is a pattern I like to use to imitate small freshwater worms, as well as little red midges. And the great thing about it is it can be trimmed the length on the water. This is a simple guide pattern that is likely to offend some, but works surprisingly well out on the water. You can find it on my website listed below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be making a guppy that I like to use to swing through the current. To start, we'll grab some white thread, continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook, and grab a mallard flank. Pull free a few fibers and secure them to the back of the fly. Continue securing to the hook shank until you reach your bead. Snip the excess free and wrap your thread back down to the hook point. Next, we'll grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using UV pearl, securing a single strand of the hook shank, folding it over and attaching it to the other side and wrap back to the hook point. Next, we'll grab some peacock curl. Select about three strands, invert your hook, and secure it to the bottom of our fly. Continue securing until we reach our tail, wrapping back up to the bead, and securing some more crystal flash, once again wrapping back down towards the tail. With this complete, use your thread to build up a smooth body, finishing just before the bead. Next, we'll grab our crystal flash and begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some egg yarn. Here I'm using a light pink. Select a small clump, folding it over your thread, wrapping it slightly back to the body of the fly. Fold over the egg yarn to create a small egg sac and secure it using your thread. Once secure, snip the excess furry. Fold over your peacock and secure it to the top of the fly, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess furry. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread furry and grab some thin UV resin to paint over the fly. Once happy, secure with the UV light, adding some thick UV resin over the top of our fly to create a rounded shape. Take your time with this and only secure it once you're happy. We'll then grab some eyes. Add a little bit of UV resin to the side of the bead, carefully placing the eye and securing it once happy. Repeat this step to the other side and add some more UV resin to fill in the gap. I like to use this fly during high water. Swinging across the current like a wet fly can result in some aggressive strikes, but it also works well under an indicator. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we are making a must-have fly for all fly fishermen. To begin this pattern, we will start by wrapping a lead-free wire around the head of our fly. Take several wraps around your hook shank and finish by jamming it into the bead. We will then select some black thread, secure this tightly to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. Use your thread to secure the excess wire and also secure all the wire wraps in place. Helicopter the excess free and begin wrapping to the bend of our hook. Here we will build a small thread dam that will become important in our next step. Grab some brown biots, select two and place them in a V formation, tying them onto the back of the fly. Secure tightly and wrapping up the hook shank until we reach our wire. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I've selected chartreuse, which is one of my favorite variations. Secure your wire tightly to your hook shank and wrap back towards our biots. Once complete, smooth out the back section of your fly and wrap your thread forward, leaving a little bit of room for the next steps. Next, we will grab our wire and begin wrapping these in closed spirals until we reach our thread. Do your best to allow each wrap to touch the previous one, leaving no gaps. This is a little easier with a rotating vise, but can be done without it. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the wire in place and helicopter the excess free. Select some uni mylar, here I'm using pearl. Tying it just behind the bead and wrapping back towards our wire. We will then select some thin skin. Here I'm using clear. Tie this around the head of our fly, once again wrapping back towards the wire. 
Our next step will be grabbing some peacock curl, selecting about two to three fibers and securing them to the head of the fly. Once complete, we can begin wrapping our peacock curl forward towards our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Next, grab a partridge feather. I prefer to select a darker brown feather. Snip off a section so it forms a V. Tie it just behind the bead so it looks something like this. With this complete, fold over your thin skin and secure it just behind the bead. You will then grab the stem of our partridge feather, pulling it forward carefully to shorten our wings. I like to stop when my wings reach where my wire started. Once happy, snip the excess free, fold over your mylar, and secure it tightly in place. Snip both the mylar and the thin skin off closely and whip finish to hold everything in place. An important part of this pattern is some UV resin. This one in particular is my favorite. You can find it in the links below. And add a drop of it just behind the bead covering our wing case. If you'd like to support the channel and pick up a few of these, you can find them listed in all my favorite variations in my fly shot listed below. And if you'd like to win this one, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and comment hashtag flies for your chance to win. Today, we're gonna create a realistic looking mosquito. We'll start off by grabbing some Ultra Thread 140. Here I'm using red. We'll attach our thread to our hook shank and lay down a thread base that we'll use in our next step. Cut the excess thread free. We will now wrap back on our thread base, building up a large thread dam. Once complete, we can whip finish and snip the excess free. Grab some UV resin and paint this over our thread dam. This is gonna emphasize the red color and give it a nice bulbous shape. Once happy, we can fix in place with a UV light and select some black thread. Here I'm using a Vivas in size 16 aught. Reattach our thread to the hook shank just in front of the buildup of thread we just created. Secure tightly and snap the excess free. We will then grab some gray UV dubbing, creating a dubbing noodle and wrapping a small section just in front of our thread dam. Next, we can grab a grizzly rooster cape. We'll select two feathers and put them into a V position. We will tie this just in front of the small section of dubbing we just created. Secure it tightly and snip the excess free. Trim up any feathers you don't like and grab some small copper wire. Secure the brass wire to the side of our mosquito. Snip the excess free and do the same to the other side. We will add one more section of brass wire to the front. This will create a total of six legs. We will then grab more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and fill in our body, taking care not to trap our brass wire in the process. We just hit 50,000 subscribers. I wanted to thank you all for the support and growing this channel so quickly. And as a thank you, I will be giving this fly away along with one of my mainly outdoors fly boxes. All you have to do to enter is hit the like button subscribe, and comment below hashtag flies for your chance to win. Once we finish dubbing, we're gonna add a set of eyes. Here I've used a small piece of yellow mono, burning it on either side to create an eye that looks much like an insect. Secure this eye tightly to the back of our fly and add a bit more dubbing to fill it in. Once complete, we can grab our whip finisher secure our thread and snip it free. We will then move on to the legs. To get the proper shape, we will use a pair of tweezers, crimping the legs to look like mosquitoes, continuing this process until we have finished all six legs. This fly will catch fish, but is not gonna be very durable. And therefore, this is more of an art project than something used to catch fish. But I wanted to do something special for our 50,000 subscriber giveaway, and I hope whoever wins gets to enjoy it. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be creating a realistic squid using feathers. To start, we'll attach some pink thread to our hook shank, secure it tightly, and snip the excess free. Continue wrapping to the back of the hook shank and grab some pink marabou. We'll measure that to be just shorter than our hook shank and secure it tightly. Fold your marabou over and wrap towards the hook eye, folding the marabou back over, securing, and snipping the excess free. This will help build up a little bit of bulk that'll be important later in the pattern. Secure to the hook shank and grab some pink squirmy worm material. Measure it to length, about two hook shanks, and secure it tightly. Snip the excess free, and repeat this process on the other side. 
We'll then set those aside, grab some pink crystal flash, using your fingers to pick it out to give it a little bit of size variation. Secure it loosely to one side and rotate it around the hook shank. Secure the other side, doing the same. Continue to secure back towards the marabou, trimming up the crystal flash to your liking. My goal is to keep it a bit longer in the marabou. We'll then grab a pink ostrich hurl. Grab a clump of about eight fibers, secure it to one side, once again twisting it around the hook shank. And we'll do the same with the other side. Secure, folding over the ostrich hurl, wrapping our thread forward, and then securing the ostrich hurl to the top of the hook shank. With that complete, snip the excess free, secure, and grab some eyes. Here we're using 10 millimeter living eyes in the color fire. You can find all the materials needed to tie this pattern in the link below. I've simply glued them onto some monofilament so they hang back past the hook shank slightly. Once complete, snip the excess free, We'll then grab some pink estaz, strip away the tips, and secure it to the back of our fly. And begin wrapping your estaz forward in open spirals. Once you reach your thread, secure tightly and snip the excess furry. Clean up the head a little bit, and grab a minnow body. This one's in pearl. Slide it over the top of our fly and secure it with our thread. Once it's secure, snip off the needed length, whip finish, and snip your thread free. We'll follow this up with a little bit of head cement to ensure that it stays in place. Take your thread and re-secure it just in front of the eye and behind the estaz. Snip the excess free, sliding the minnow body backwards towards our thread. This will create the hood. Secure loosely at first to ensure you get the shape you're looking for and continue to wrap tighter and tighter. Carefully trim off any excess and secure everything in place by whip finishing. Snip your thread free and paint over the hood with some UV resin. This will take several coats to get a nice smooth finish, so take your time with this, adding a little bit at a time and fixing it in between with a UV light. With the hood finished, we'll grab some Sharpies to add some pigmentation. Here I'm using blue, red, and purple. Simply add some dots over the hood in each specific color in order to give it a little bit of variation. Once complete, we'll give it one last coat of bone dry UV resin and secure with a UV light. And this is a realistic squid. This is more of a fun artistic tie, but would make for a great pattern for salt water. However, I would swap out some of the materials. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be tying up one of my favorite variations of a dirty hipster. Now for starters we're going to use some tan thread and secure that to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and wrap back up towards the head of our fly. We'll secure the bead in place using some lead free wire, helicopter it free and wrap back towards the bend of our hook. Here we can build up a small thread dam Grab some brown biots. We'll snip off two and place the tips splaying outwards in our fingers. Measure that out to be about half or hook shank in length, whatever you prefer, and transfer that measurement to the back of our fly. Make sure you're happy with the results and then secure the rest of the biot towards the head of our fly. Once complete, we'll snip the excess free. Grab some copper wire I'm using a size brassy. Secure that to the hook and wrap back towards our biot tail. Once complete, we will grab some brown hair's ear dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin building up a body of our fly. And once complete, we can grab our brassy wire and start counter wrapping that up the fly until we reach our thread. Once here, we will secure by taping wraps both in front and behind and helicoptering free. Next up, we will grab a strand of flashaboo. We're going to secure that just behind the head of our fly and wrap back slightly onto our dubbing. Next, we will grab a small piece of thin skin, here I'm using clear, and secure that over our flashaboo. 
With those in place, we'll grab some silicon legs, attach those just behind the head of our fly, and secure them tightly. Next, we will snip to length. I like mine to be a bit longer than the body of the fly. Grab some more brown hairs here, and we will use this dubbing to help move our legs to face the proper direction. Take your time with this as you wrap up towards the head. Make sure the legs splay out properly. And once you reach the head of the fly, you can brush everything back, secure it in place, fold over the thin skin and flash a boo, and secure tightly. Once complete, we can snip those free, pull back our silicone legs, and whip finish to keep everything in place. Snip your thread free and add some UV resin to the back of this fly. This will both increase the durability of our fly, but also its visibility and the shine that we get from our flashaboo. This is an excellent trout fly. It sinks quickly, has a great profile, and the legs provide a lot of movement in the water. If you don't tie yourself and would like to try some out, you can go visit my website listed down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying a giant Helgramite that you should have in your fly box this spring. To start, we'll attach some tan thread to our hook shank and create a small buildup around the eye of the fly. Grab some brown biots, select two fibers and place them in a V formation, securing them to the head of the fly. Secure tightly to your hook shank and snip the excess free. Cover your tag ends and whip finish to hold it in place. Snip your thread free and slide the bead back to the head of the fly, at which point we'll reattach our thread, snipping the excess free. And grab some lead-free wire. Insert the wire into the bead and secure tightly with your thread. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping the thread well into the bend of the hook. Here, we'll create another thread dam just as we did at the head of the fly that'll help splay out our biots. Place two more biots at the back of the fly and secure them with your thread. We'll then grab some straggle string, which is essentially sparsest as, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll set it aside and grab some tan dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic blend. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this in closed touching spirals, tightening and adding more dubbing as needed. We'll continue doing so until we reach just past our hook point. With this complete, we'll grab our straggle string and begin to counter wrap the dubbing until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab our dubbing brush and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Wrap your thread to the bead and grab some mylar. Here I'm using pearl. Secure the mylar strip to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards your dubbing. Returning the thread forward, we'll then grab a turkey tail. I get asked where I get my materials all the time, and like this turkey tail, many of them are gathered from hunting trips. Many of you don't know this, but I actually have a second channel that has hundreds of hours of both fishing and hunting related content. You can check that out in the comments below. With this complete, we'll grab this cool set of legs and secure them to the top of the fly. Don't worry too much about how the leg placement looks because we'll be fixing that in the next step. Just focus on securing it tightly. Grab some more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and use the dubbing, both dubbing the body and also taking care to position the legs how you'd like. Take your time with this and create a transition towards the head of the fly. Once complete, fold over your turkey tail, secure in place, followed by your mylar. Secure them both tightly taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Whip finishing to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and grab some thin UV resin, painting it over the back of your fly. Secure with a UV light and brush everything out to give it a nice, buggy look. And this is a Helgramite imitation. I find they work exceptionally well in the spring, and if these are in your waters, you should definitely give it a try. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to tie this pattern that I've just been calling the partridge and olive. For starters, we're going to use an emerger style hook and some olive vivis thread. This one is in 14 aught. We'll start our thread wraps with a bit of room to spare for the head of the fly. Grab some brassy wire. This is in chartreuse. 
We'll secure the wire to the hook, wrapping well beyond the bend of the hook. Move the wire out of the way and we can use our thread to start building up a body transition. A great way to do this is to go up to the head of the fly and then wrap your weight back down until you almost reach where you started and continue this process until you reach the head of the fly once again. This is a simple way to create a nice transition to the head of our fly. After that, we'll grab our wire and start wrapping it in open spirals until we reach our thread. At which point we can secure our wire, taking wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicopter it free. We'll wrap back just a little bit, grab some olive dubbing. This in particular is a synthetic dubbing with a little bit of UV in it, but of course you can use whatever dubbing you choose. I like to take my brush and give this a buggy look by brushing it out thoroughly, pulling any fibers that are a little too much. After that, we'll move our thread to the head of our fly, giving ourselves a base for this next step. We'll grab a partridge feather and we want to measure the strands to be just a little bit longer than the hook itself. Once we've done that, we can pull the fibers back, leaving ourselves a small little triangle. We will snip that off further and use this piece to adhere it to the head of our fly. Once that feather is secure, we can brush our fibers backwards and then start to hackle around the fly. You can use your fingers, or if your feather is short, you can use a pair of hackle pliers. Once we're happy with that, we will secure it in place and snip the end free. Once we've done this, we'll take our thread and bring it back onto the hackle fibers a little bit. And this will just prevent them from standing up straight and kind of give them a brushed back look. With that complete, we can whip finish in the process building up a nice head. I like to make a cone shape for this particular pattern. Seat the knot and snip it free. And if you have any fibers near the head, the simplest thing I've found to do is grab a lighter and simply burn them off. Just make sure you cover up any delicate parts of the fly and only move your lighter close enough to singe the fibers you want. We'll grab some UV resin and paint that over our head. And this will create a nice smooth head section of our fly. You can pull off any fibers that you don't like. This one in particular was a little long and that is the finished product. Soft hackles offer incredible movement in the water and are really underutilized by many people. I'd highly suggest giving it a try. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you go down below, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. And I will catch you in the next video. This pattern is probably the only dry fly that you'll ever need. We'll start off with some black Vivis thread. We'll secure our thread to the hook shank, creating a base for our next step. Snap the excess free and grab some parawing material. Here I've selected some high-vis orange. Secure it tightly a little ways from the hook eye. Begin wrapping your thread up the parawing material, creating a post. It's best to start this with some loose wraps, wrapping tighter and tighter as you go. We will then work our way back down to the bottom and create some thread dams, ensuring our post isn't going to spin around the hook shank. Once complete, we will wrap our thread to the back of the hook, snipping off the excess of our parawing. Grab a brown feather, we'll select about 5 to 10 fibers, and measure them to be about the length of our hook shank. Secure them to the back of the hook and wrap forward, further securing them up towards our post. Snip the excess free and wrap back towards the tail. Here we'll grab some gray dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping forward towards our post, creating a transition from the tail to the post of our fly. Carefully avoiding not to trap any fibers in the process. Once complete, we will grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using grizzly as well as a brown color. Rip some fibers free, leaving an exposed stem of our feather, and tie them onto our post. We'll secure it tightly, 
snip the excess free, and begin wrapping both feathers towards the top of the post. Once again, taking loose wraps to begin and securing tighter and tighter as you go. Work your way back down to the base and grab some more dubbing. Here I'm going to be using a two-tone, so I have selected black UV dubbing. Make a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this towards the hook eye. We want to continue our transition from the back of the fly with the head being the thickest part. Grab more dubbing as needed and continue to work back towards our post. We want to finish with our thread above the body for the next step. We can then begin to hackle our two feathers, wrapping them around the post towards the base. Once happy, we'll carefully secure them, being cautious not to trap any feathers beneath our thread. Snip the excess free, and grab a whip finisher. Once again, we'll be careful not to trap any fibers. And this is the Parachute Atoms. If I had to choose to fish one dry fly, I would choose this one in several different colors and sizes. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to be recreating one of the most successful bass lures out there. We'll start off with some olive thread and grab some chartreuse loco foam. Cut it out into a fin-like shape and then grab some olive dubbing. Create a small dubbing noodle, just enough to cover our hook shank. This will help prevent the foam from spinning around the hook. Once complete, secure your foam fin to the hook shank, starting with a loose securing wrap and wrapping tighter and tighter as you go. With this complete, we'll create a dubbing loop wrapping back towards our tail. Grab some more dubbing, sliding it into our dubbing loop, followed by some rabbit fur. It should look something like this. Next, we'll spin it up and brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Once complete, brush everything backwards and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, continuing to do so until you reach your thread. At which point, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our dubbing loop and snipping the excess free. With this complete, we'll whip finish to secure everything in place. Snipping your thread free once complete and grab some squish needle, much like chenille, but just squishier, as well as some estaz. Both of these are in olive. Additionally, we'll grab some 30 pound braid, create a small loop and string it through our hook eye. Wrap the tag ends through the initial loop, pulling it tight to secure in place. Next, we'll reattach our thread, snap the excess free, and secure our chenille and a staz to the hook shank. By stripping a few fibers free, stringing it through the hook eye and securing it tightly with your thread. Start by securing the tag ends, securing the two materials facing the opposite direction, folding it over and re-securing facing forward. This will help ensure that everything's secured tightly. Once complete, you can whip finish once again and snip your thread free. Next, we'll fold our two materials over, grab the braided line, along with the squish needle, and begin to braid the estaz over the two, doing so in open spirals and wrapping about four inches up the chenille. This will help add some durability and blend the two materials. Once complete, pinch the materials tightly, nip the excess free, and for now, we'll hold the tag ends together using some UV resin. Fix in place with a UV light, and set the tail to the side. Next, we'll grab a heavy jig hook and re-secure some heavier olive thread. Snip the excess free and continue laying down a thread base for our next steps. Next, we'll grab some tungsten dumbbell eyes, securing it tightly to our hook shank by taking several thread wraps in a diagonal pattern, as well as wrapping underneath and to either side of our dumbbell eyes. You can help further secure it by adding some super glue, both to the eyes as well as to the hook shank. Continue wrapping your thread till we reach the bend of the hook and measure your tail to length. We'll strip away some of the excess, exposing the braided lines underneath and secure them tightly with the tail facing towards our eyes. Once tightly secured, we'll fold everything over and re-secure it facing in the opposite direction. This will help ensure that our tail can't be pulled free. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread forward and create another dubbing loop. Once again, stripping away some rabbit fur, and grabbing some olive ice dubbing. Blend the two together, creating a custom dubbing blend, and grab some olive silicon legs. We'll add this to our dubbing mix and snip it to length. With the dubbing complete, we'll slide it into our dubbing loop, making sure it's evenly spaced, and spin everything up tightly so nothing can come loose. And with that complete, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Next, wrap your thread towards the head of the fly and begin to wrap your dubbing noodle forward, stopping just short of our dumbbell eyes. 
secure it with your thread, and snip the excess free. We'll then create another dubbing loop, this time inserting some olive laser dubbing. Ensure that everything's evenly spaced as before, spin it up, brush it out, and wrap it in close touching spirals until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and brush everything out to give it a nice, buggy look. And this is my interpretation of a bass Ned rig. It has a flexible tail that'll help it float upright in the water column, and the dumbbell eyes will help give the flexible tail plenty of action. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Catch more fish with this one simple trick. We'll start with some flat black thread, secure it to your hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Continue wrapping to the bend of the hook and grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using gold. Secure a single strand to the back of your fly, keeping the length a bit shorter than the hook shank. Continue securing and snip the excess furry. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread towards the bead, grab some copper brassy wire, inserting it into the bead and securing tightly as we wrap back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll reverse directions and take our time to make a nice smooth body as we move towards the bead. For this pattern, I have selected to use a wax thread. If you have extra wax built up on your body like I do, you can simply smooth it out with a lighter. I really enjoy the smooth, glossy look that we get. We'll grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly, taking care to make sure the wraps are evenly spaced as we move towards our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess furry. We'll select some synthetic ice dubbing, here I'm using copper, create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this just behind our bead, creating a compact dubbing ball. With this step complete, we'll grab a black CDC feather, smooth out our thread to flatten it out using our bobkin to split it in half. Insert the CDC fibers between our thread and spinning it to tighten it up. We'll begin wrapping this around the head of our fly, using your fingers to give it a nice brush back look. And this is a midge I like to call the Bronze Age. This fly sinks fast, attracts attention. The added CDC feathers give this pattern an incredible amount of movement and help trap air bubbles in the process. If you'd like to pick up this pattern, you can find it on my website listed below. This fly pattern is my secret weapon when it comes to imitating midges. To start, we'll secure some black thread to our hook shank and grab some peacock curl. Select a single strand using your fingernails to strip off any fibers, leaving you with the quill underneath. Secure the strip quill to the hook shank and wrap well into the bend of the hook. Reverse your thread direction and finish around the hook point. We'll then grab our quill and carefully begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals towards our thread at which point we'll secure and snip the excess free. We'll then add some UV resin over our quill. This will not only add shine, but also increase the durability of the highly delicate quill. Once happy, secure with a UV light and grab some CDC. This maroon color works exceptionally well in my waters. Secure to the top of your fly using a pinch wrap and wrap it back slightly on top of your quill. Once complete, grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a light tan. Create a sparse dubbing noodle and begin to dub your body, tightening and removing or adding material as needed once complete, brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look, being careful not to break your CDC feather. Once happy, we'll fold over our feather and secure it just behind the hook eye. Snip the excess free, folding everything back and whip finishing just behind the hook eye. And this is the smoke jumper. I like to use this pattern to imitate small midges, typically tying it behind a clink hammer or a parachute atoms. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be tying a paradigm variation. For starters, we're going to use some Vivas thread in olive. We'll start by securing our thread to the hook shank, snapping the excess free, and inserting a small lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place. Secure tightly and helicopter free. Next, we'll wrap towards the bend of the hook. 
and grab some white feathers. We'll select about five to 10 fibers, pull those free and measure them to be the length of the hook shank. Secure them to the back of the fly, further securing by wrapping towards the bead. Pull the excess free and grab some gold wire. This one in particular is a small gold wire that we will wrap to the back of our hook. Once complete, we will use our thread to create a seamless body transition towards the head of our fly. Grab our gold wire and start to wrap this in open spirals till we reach our thread. Once complete, we will secure taking wraps both in front as well as behind our gold wire and helicopter free. Next, we can whip finish, securing everything in place. Seat the knot and snip free. I like to make sure to burn off any tag ends for this next step. Grab some UV resin and paint this over our body. This is going to give it a nice shiny and smooth look. Once happy, we can use a UV light to fix it in place. For this next step, we're going to use some eyeshadow. Now, if you don't have any of your own like me, you can always steal some from your wife or your girlfriend. I like to use this midnight black color for this particular pattern. You'll also need to grab some UV resin. We'll mix these together and add a drop of our mixture onto the bead as well as part of the body. Make sure you take your time with this. If you have a rotating vise, it's very helpful to get the proper shape. This fly with the tungsten bead is perfect for pocket water trout. I like to use this one in particular anywhere I find blue wing olives. If you want to try these flies out for yourself, but don't tie, you can always submit a custom order on my website and I'd be happy to tie some up for you. And I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to be tying an underutilized fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, grab some small copper wire, secure it to the hook shank, wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back to the head of the fly. If you have a rotary vise, put in a couple turn whip finish and set your thread to the side. We'll then grab our wire and use your vise's rotary function to wrap it towards the head of the fly. If your vise doesn't have a rotary function, you can simply do this by hand. Today is also the airing of the first ever Mainly Flies podcast. You can find that on my second channel, linked here. The primary focus will be to answer your fly tying questions. So if there's anything you want to know more detail about, be sure to leave it in the comments of the most recent podcast. Once we reach the hook point, we'll grab our thread and secure the wire tightly in place, taking thread wrap both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some tinsel. Here I'm using a gold hollow tinsel. Secure it to one side of our fly, wrapping back towards the wire. Repeating this process with the other side. Secure tightly and begin to build up a larger head than our body. Fold your tinsel over and secure it to the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure they're oriented how you like. With this complete, snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place and cover your tag ends. Snip your thread free and grab some bone dry UV resin to paint over the body as well as the head. Fix in place with the UV light and add a second drop to the head of the fly. We want to make this look a little bit larger than the body. Fix with the UV light and this is the brass It's a highly productive fly pattern that often gets overlooked and they work exceptionally well in the spring and winter months. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying a realistic caddis larva posted by the winner of our latest discord challenge, Ties Flies. You can see the links to his social media in the comments below. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC, secure it to our hook shank, and continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. We'll reverse our thread direction back to the head of the fly. Next, we'll grab some monofilament line. If you don't have a spool, this is the equivalent of a four pound. Secure it to your hook shank and wrap to the tail of your fly. Once complete, reverse your thread's direction back to your starting point. Next up, we'll grab some brown ostrich hurl, securing it carefully to the underside of the fly and wrapping towards our monofilament. 
once again returning our thread to the original position. Next, we'll begin to build up a smooth body transition towards the head of the fly, ensuring to leave yourself a little room for our next steps. Once happy, we'll grab some latex, secure it to our fly, wrapping back towards our other materials. And return your thread to the original position. At which point we can whip finish, snip our thread free, switching it over to a thinner black thread. Secure to your hook shank and snip the excess free. Next up, we'll grab our latex and begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals, slightly overlapping the previous wrap. This will help build a transition towards our thread, as well as give the fly a unique segmented look. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the material, and snipping the excess free. Wrap back on the latex slightly, grabbing your ostrich hurl and lightly securing it to the head of the fly. We're only using this step to help hold it in place while we grab our monofilament wire to further secure it and add some durability. Try to have your monofilament rest in the grooves of the latex that we just created. This will help increase its segmented look and continue to do so until you reach your thread, at which point we can secure, snipping both the monofilament and ostrich hurl free. Next, we'll grab a pheasant tail, ripping off a single fiber and securing it to the side of your fly. Grab another fiber and slide it up your thread to help secure it to the other side. Once happy, use your thread to secure both in place, holding them backwards to help give them a brush back orientation. Wrap your thread forward and repeat this process a second time. Once you reach the head of the fly, we'll grab two more pheasant tail fibers and secure them facing out from the hook eye with a similar process that we used previously. Once happy, secure in place by whip finishing both behind your legs, fold them backwards and add a few extra whip finishes just in front. Snip your thread free and trim up all the remaining fibers, being careful not to snip off any of the legs that we intend to leave. With this complete, we'll grab a pair of tweezers, grabbing the fibers in the middle, bending them and pushing them back on themselves to help give them a more buggy appearance. Paint over the back with some UV resin to add some durability, fix with the UV light, and grab a Sharpie. Use your Sharpie to paint over the back of the fly, giving the upper section a two-tone look. To win six of these flies and Tied by Ty's flies himself, along with six of my vinyl stone flies. All you have to do is leave a comment, hashtag flies below, and for a second chance to win, click the link in the comments to visit Ty's flies. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying my favorite variation of the Frenchie. We're gonna be using a Euro style hook along with some orange thread. This in particular is Vivis in size 12 oct. We'll start our thread wraps right behind the bead of the hook, snap that off, and then we'll put in some lead-free wire to help keep that bead in place. Helicopter that free, and then wrap our thread all the way to the start of the hook bend. From here, we'll build up a small thread dam and grab some pheasant tail. We're going to use about three fibers, rip those off and measure them to be about a quarter of the hook shank in length, and we'll attach that to the back of our hook. Once we're done with that, we can continue to secure that pheasant tail by wrapping up to the start of our lead free wire. Snap those free and you can see why we added this thread dam. This splays out our pheasant tails and gives it a mayfly-like appearance. Next up, we'll grab some brassy wire. Here we're going to be using a copper color. Tie that into your hook shank and then we'll wrap it all the way back to the tail of our fly. We'll return our thread to the start of our lead free wire. Grab some more pheasant tail. This time we'll grab about five to six fibers. Snip off the tips and then tie them onto our hook shank. With that complete we will wrap our thread all the way up to the head of the fly. Put in a half hitch and move our threads off to the side. 
Now we can begin to wrap our pheasant tail, and we're gonna wrap this almost all the way to the head of the fly, leaving just a little bit of room. Take some thread rats both in front as well as behind, and then snip the excess free. After which, we'll grab our brassy wire and start to wrap that up in open spirals. When we reach the head, we'll secure it and then helicopter that free. Next up, we're going to grab some dubbing. This in particular is a pheasant tail ice dubbing that includes some UV fibers. So we'll create a dubbing noodle and wrap a nice tight dubbing section at the head of our fly. Finishing off at the head of the fly, we'll grab our whip finisher and create a quite a strong band at the front of our fly. And this is our completed Frenchie. This is one of my favorite variations to use for brook trout. And if you want to try some of these out for yourself, you can visit my website down below and I'd be happy to tie some up for you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. This freshwater shrimp is a must have. To start this pattern, we'll grab some olive vivas thread, secure it to our hook shank, snap the excess free, and continue wrapping well into the bend of your hook. Next, we'll grab a mallard flank, secure about 10 fibers to the back of the fly, further securing it and wrapping up the hook shank. Once we reach the hook eye, we'll snip the excess free and wrap back towards our tail. Make yourself a tiny set of eyes out of some monofilament line. Secure it to the back of the fly. Use your thread to secure it tightly and also help orient it in the proper direction. Once complete, we'll wrap up towards the hook eye, grab some small green wire and secure it to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the eye. I also want to take a second to say thank you to Jay Stockard for bringing you this video. You can pick up all the needed materials to tie this pattern for 15% off in the link below. With our wire secured, we'll grab a dubbing blend. Here I'm using some ice dubbing in copper, green, and chartreuse. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this up the body until we reach the hook eye, at which point we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Grab some UV resin, this one's my favorite, and spread it over the back of your fly. Once happy, we'll secure with a UV light and then we'll come back and add a second layer. Building up UV resin in small layers at a time will help give the fly a cleaner look. Grab our wire and begin wrapping this in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Try to prevent from trapping as many fibers as possible in the process. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the wire free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and brush out any trapped fibers, adding one more layer of UV resin over the top of our wire. And this is one of my favorite versions of a scud. Jay Stockard has provided a $25 gift card to one lucky winner. For your chance to win, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe, and comment hashtag Jay Stockard in the comments below. With summer on the way, we're going to be tying up one of my favorite grasshoppers. To tie it, We'll start off with some white thread. Secure it to your hook shank and continue wrapping until you reach the bend of your hook. At which point, we'll grab some dubbing. I like to use a synthetic blend of chartreuse, copper, and green. Blend them together and create a dubbing noodle. Begin wrapping your dubbing noodle forward in close touching spirals. This will add some shine to our pattern as well as create a base for our next steps. Continuing to add dubbing until we reach the head of our fly. At which point, we'll grab some 2mm foam. Here I'm using yellow. Cut a small strip out of your foam, about a hook gap in length, and round over the ends. This will form our body. Measure it to length, sticking out just slightly past our hook bend, and secure it to the top of our hook shank. With this complete, we'll grab a yellow marker and color in our white thread. We'll begin securing our foam to the top of the fly, doing so by taking tight thread wraps over the back until you reach the bend of your hook at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction and continue securing it back up towards the head of the fly. The finished product should look something like this. Once complete, we'll continue securing our foam all the way up to the hook eye. Add another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this just in front of our foam. This will help prop up our next material. We can then grab some Elk hair. Here I'm using natural. Select a small clump 
and brush out any of the small insulating fibers. Add your clump to a hair stacker to help even out the edges, tapping it against a hard surface until they're all aligned, at which point we can remove our clump, measure it to length, about the size of our foam, and secure it to the top of our fly by taking a couple loose securing wraps before tightening it down. You want to ensure that it doesn't spin around your hook. Continue to secure it in place and grab a razor blade. We'll use this to trim away any excess fibers. Wrapping back up towards the head of the fly, ensuring everything's well secured. Here, we'll create another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping back towards our elk hair. Trim your foam to length, folding your foam backwards and securing it tightly in place. Make sure it's secured, but don't take too many extra thread wraps. We'll then grab a different colored foam. Here I'm using orange, but just select a hotspot color. Cut out a small section and secure it tightly in place, followed by some silicone legs. Here I'm using tan. Secure the legs to either side of your fly. Start by securing it loosely with a single thread wrap, followed by additional securing wraps once happy. We'll then cut our legs to length. I like the back ones to be roughly the size of the body, while I trim up the front ones to be just slightly shorter. Finish by adding another dubbing noodle, covering up any of our visible thread wraps, and finishing at the head of the fly. Paint over your thread once more, and whip finish to secure everything in place. Snip your thread free, and brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. And this is the GFA Hopper. It's one of my favorite hoppers to use as a dry dropper. It's quite durable, floats like a cork, and offers an excellent profile in the water. If you don't tie, you can visit the link in the comments to help support my channel by picking some up off my website. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This freshwater shrimp is a must have. To tie it, we'll start with some white Vivas thread. Here I'm using 12 aught. Secure it to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. Continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook and return your thread to the midpoint. Next, we'll grab some ostrich hurl. Here I'm using a light pink. Strip the stems free and secure it to the hook shank, wrapping back to the bend of the hook. Once complete, we'll return our thread to the head of the fly and grab some large wire. Here I'm using red. Secure the wire to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards our ostrich hurl. Once complete, we'll once again return our thread to the head of the fly and begin wrapping our wire in open spirals till we reach the head of the fly. Take your time making sure that each wrap is evenly spaced. For those of you who don't tie and would like to try this fly, it's now available on my website in all my favorite variations. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess free. Next, grab your ostrich hurl and twist it up slightly. We will then begin wrapping this in between our wire, doing so until we reach the head of the fly. Secure the ostrich hurl tightly and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll whip finish, snip the excess free, and if your flies like mine, you can clean up the head a little bit using a lighter. Wet your fingers and brush the fly in a downward motion. This will reveal the wire and make our feathers have a leg-like appearance. Carefully set in place with some UV resin, here I'm using a bone dry. Fix with a UV light, grabbing a thicker resin to build up the back of our fly, carefully spreading the UV resin over the entirety of the top of our fly. The best way to work with UV resin is to have patience and only fix it in place once you're happy with the results. Additionally, building it up layer by layer will give it a smoother appearance. And this is a freshwater shrimp often referred to as a scud. It's an extremely popular food source for trout and deserves a spot in your fly box. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most used and popular fly patterns. To tie it, we'll start off with some brown thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook and grab some pheasant tail. We'll grab about five or six fibers, measure them to be roughly the length of the hook shank, 
and secure them to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll continue wrapping towards the bead, further securing the pheasant tail as we go. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into your bead and secure wrapping back towards the tail. We'll bring our thread forward just past the hook point, grab some more pheasant tail and secure it to our hook shank once again wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our pheasant tail forward in closed touching spirals. You can do so by just wrapping it around with your fingers. However, if your vise has a rotary function, this makes the process far easier. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the pheasant tail in place and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward, counter wrapping our pheasant tail as we go. Doing so will help increase the durability of this pattern. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and helicopter the excess free. Grab a few more strands of pheasant tail and secure them with the tips facing out past the bead. Generally, I measure mine to be about one and a half bead lengths. Continue securing the pheasant tail on top of our hook wrapping back towards the wire. Once complete, bring your thread forward and grab some peacock curl. We'll select a couple strands, secure them to the body, and wrap back towards our pheasant tail. We'll return our thread to the bead and begin wrapping our peacock curl in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping our excess furry. We'll then take our fingers and use them to splay out our pheasant tail tips to form some legs. Once happy, we'll fold over the remaining pheasant tail fibers, secure them just behind the bead, and snip the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. The pheasant tail is a classic pattern that is one of the most known and used patterns out there. It makes for a great general pattern, imitating mayflies and caddis exceptionally well. You can find this pattern on my website, but if you would like your chance to win this fly, comment hashtag flies, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If there are caddis flies in the waters that you fish, this fly is for you. To start, we'll use some flat black thread and wrap well into the bend of the hook. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a blend of synthetic UV dubbing in olive. Secure it to the back of the fly and snip the excess free. And then trim our tail to length. This will just be a tag so you can keep it quite short. Next, we'll grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Secure it to the hook shank and wrap back towards our tag, bringing your thread forward once complete. Grab a turkey tail, snip off a quarter inch section and secure it to the top of the fly, and once again wrapping it back towards the tag end, returning your thread to the hook point once again. Finally, we will grab some flashaboo. Secure this to the hook shank, wrapping back towards our tag end and turkey tail. Create a dubbing noodle with the same dubbing used for the tag end and begin wrapping it up the body until we reach the hook point. Using the hook point as a gauge of a stopping point will help you stay consistent when creating multiple flies. With the body complete, grab your flashaboo and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Fold over your turkey tail over the back of the fly and secure it in place with your thread. We will then grab our brassy wire and begin wrapping it forward, once again in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Stopping once we reach our thread and securing it in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess furry. With this complete, we'll wrap forward towards the hook eye leaving a little bit of room, fold our turkey tail over and begin wrapping back towards the hook point and then grabbing some brown ostrich hurl. Secure it in place, snip the excess free and begin wrapping it in closed touching spirals towards your thread. Once happy, secure in place and snap the excess free. Wet your fingers and pull the ostrich hurl in a downward motion. Grab your turkey tail and fold it over, securing in place once complete. Next, select two strands of the turkey tail, folding them backwards and wrapping to secure them in place. Snip the excess free and cut your turkey tail to length to mimic legs. Secure everything in place and build up a head in the process by whip finishing 
snip your thread free, and grab some UV resin, not only adding durability, but also increasing the shine of the wing case. This is a complicated tie that's not for everyone. It does look good in the fly box and is extremely successful at catching trout. If you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying one of my favorite caddis larvae. To start, secure some black thread to your hook shank and snap the excess free. And grab some white ostrich hurl. Grab a small clump of three and secure it to the back of your fly. Securing tightly up the hook shank until you reach your hook point. At which point, snap the excess free and trim your tail to length. We'll then grab some fine mono, but you can always grab some fluoro tippet. Secure that to the hook shank, wrapping towards the tail. Returning your thread to the hook point once complete. And grab some thin skin. Here I'm using clear. Cut your thin skin into a wedge and secure it to the top of the fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, grab some olive dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, stopping once we reach the hook point. And brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Next up, we'll grab a turkey tail and pluck out a single fiber. You can see that it leaves us with a nice leg-like appearance. Measure this to be about the size of our dubbing and secure it to one side of your fly. Snip the excess free and repeat this process to the other side. We'll then grab some black hairs your dubbing, create a dubbing noodle and wrap this in front of our legs. Once complete, we'll brush it out once again to give it a nice, buggy look. We'll then grab another turkey leg and secure it to the side of the fly, this time making it a little bit longer than the previous leg, and snip the excess free. Add some more hairs you're dubbing, and repeat this step one more time. Snip your excess free, and finish it off with a little more dubbing. And of course, brush it out to give it that nice, buggy look. Fold your thin skin over and secure it to the head of the fly. Once complete, snip your excess free, grab your mono wire and begin wrapping this forward in open spirals, taking care not to trap any legs in the process. Continue wrapping the mono thread forward until you reach the hook eye, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Use a whip finisher to build up a small head and paint it over with some UV resin. And this is an extremely buggy caddis larvae. If you don't tie and would like to try this fly, we just restocked it on my website. You can pick it up in this variation or in an alternative tan. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying one of my favorite caddis larvae. To start, secure some black thread to your hook shank and snap the excess free and grab some white ostrich hurl. Grab a small clump of three and secure it to the back of your fly, securing tightly up the hook shank until you reach your hook point, at which point snap the excess free and trim your tail to length. We'll then grab some fine mono, but you can always grab some fluoro tippet. Secure that to the hook shank, wrapping towards the tail, returning your thread to the hook point once complete, and grab some thin skin. Here I'm using clear, Cut your thin skin into a wedge and secure it to the top of the fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, grab some olive dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, stopping once we reach the hook point. And brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Next up, we'll grab a turkey tail and pluck out a single fiber. You can see that it leaves us with a nice leg-like appearance. Measure this to be about the size of our dubbing and secure it to one side of your fly. Snip the excess free and repeat this process to the other side. We'll then grab some black hairs your dubbing, create a dubbing noodle and wrap this in front of our legs. Once complete, we'll brush it out once again to give it a nice, buggy look. We'll then grab another turkey leg and secure it to the side of the fly, this time making it a little bit longer than the previous leg, and snip the excess free. Add some more hairs you're dubbing, and repeat this step one more time. Snip your excess free, and finish it off with a little more dubbing. And of course, brush it out to give it that nice, buggy look. 
fold your thin skin over and secure it to the head of the fly. Once complete, snip your excess free, grab your mono wire and begin wrapping this forward in open spirals, taking care not to trap any legs in the process. Continue wrapping the mono thread forward until you reach the hook eye, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Use a whip finisher to build up a small head and paint it over with some UV resin. And this is an extremely buggy caddis larvae. If you don't tie and would like to try this fly, we just restocked it on my website. You can pick it up in this variation or in an alternative tan. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be tying up the holy grail of fly patterns. We'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank and snap the excess free. Slide forward your copper bead securing it just behind your hook eye by taking securing thread wraps on top of the bead, repeating this step several times to help secure it in place. Finishing with your thread just behind the bead. We'll then grab some flashaboo, here I'm using pearl, as well as some chartreuse, brassy wire. Starting by inserting the flashaboo into the bead and securing it tightly with your thread. You'll continue to secure it to the hook shank well into the bend of the hook at which point you'll reverse your thread's direction back up towards the bead. We'll insert our brassy wire into the bead and securing it to the hook shank, just as we did the flashaboo. Once we reach the tail of our fly, we'll set our wire to the side and grab some olive hairs here. Create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals. We'll do so until we reach our bead. Continue to add and tighten the dubbing as needed. Once we reach our thread, we'll grab our flashaboo and begin to wrap this forward in the same direction we wrap the dubbing, doing so in open spirals. Once we reach our bead, we'll secure with our thread and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our wire. Here, we'll counter wrap both the dubbing as well as the flashaboo to add durability to our pattern and continuing to do so until we reach the bead, at which point we'll secure with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. And with this complete, we'll brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll then grab a turkey flat. I've selected to use the pearlescent tips, strip a section free and secure the pearlescent side facing down towards your fly. You could also use the standard turkey flat or a pheasant tail. However, this adds some character as well as some shine to our wing case. Secure the turkey flat in place, at which point we'll grab some more hairs ear dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this forward until we reach the bead. Wrapping your thread just in front of the bead once complete. Next, you can grab a partridge or a rough grouse feather, strip a small clump free, and secure it underneath your fly. You want the tips of the partridge feather to reach roughly to the back of your fly. Snip the excess free with finish and snip your thread free. We'll switch over to a hotspot color. Here I've selected to use fluorescent green, securing it to the head of the fly and snipping the excess free. We'll then fold over our turkey wing, but before we do so, we'll brush out the dubbing underneath to give it a nice buggy look and folding over the turkey wing once complete. Secure it tightly to the head of the fly, repositioning as needed and snip the excess free. Secure everything in place and build up a prominent hotspot by whip finishing. Snip your thread free and paint it over with some UV resin. This will add durability as well as shine to our fly pattern. Fix in place with the UV light and to give the legs a better look, you can use your finger to squish and add some kinks to the upper portion of it. This will give them a more lifelike and legged appearance. And this is one of my favorite variations of the Holy Grail and works particularly well for imitating caddis. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying a simple and effective bait fish. Start this pattern, we'll grab some white 140 ultra thread, secure it tightly to our hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Continue wrapping back till you reach the bend of the hook and grab some white marabou. We'll measure this out to be a bit longer than our hook shank and secure it to the back of the fly. We'll then fold over the marabou, wrap our thread forward, 
holding the marabou back over and securing it to our hook shank. This step helped to keep the body of the fly nice and uniform while further securing the marabou. Once complete, we'll snip the excess furry and grab some silver hollow tinsel. Secure about eight fibers tightly to one side of our fly, snip the excess furry, and do the same with the other side. We'll now snip these to length, leaving them to be just a bit longer than our marabou. We'll wrap our thread forward to the hook eye, smoothing out the body as needed. Put in a three turn whip finish, and if you have a rotary vise, set your thread to the side. We'll begin wrapping our hollow tinsel forward to the hook eye. You wanna do so in a closed spiral, making sure to cover up any of our thread below. Secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We can then whip finish, cutting our thread free. We'll grab two eyes, I like to use red or yellow to add a bit of a hot spot. Add some UV resin to the side of the fly and place the eye on top of it. Secure with a UV light, doing the same to the other side. If you've ever been curious as to what resin I use, I prefer to use solar res as it cures tack free and doesn't yellow over time. We will then start to fill in our fly with UV resin and we'll start at the head of the fly. This is the most important part and you should take your time while doing so. Fill in the eyes, giving it a nice rounded shape, securing with the UV light once happy. We'll continue adding UV resin in small layers as it's easier to work with and creates a smoother finish. Now at the base, we will continue building up the head of our fly, keeping it nice and rounded. Once happy, we'll once again secure with a UV light and begin to work on our body, filling it in with UV resin. Once again, we'll start with small layers and build up as we go. Once we've laid a base, we will secure it in place and come back in with some more resin to build out the body. Now that we have a good base layer, we can use our rotating vise to help build up a body of resin. Secure it once happy and finish it off by adding a little bit extra to the back of the fly. And this is a version of a surf candy that I like to call the glass minnow. Some of you have asked if there's other ways to support the channel because you don't fish and I do have merchandise if you would like. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most popular dry flies, and today I'm gonna show you how to tie it. Start off with some olive thread, secure it to your hook shank, continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook, and as an optional step, grab some Zelon. We'll secure the Zelon to the back of the fly, snip the excess free, securing the excess tightly to the hook shank. With this complete, we'll advance our thread forward, snip the Zelon to length, and bring our thread forward to the head of the fly. Next, we'll grab some small wire, here I'm using green, secure it to our hook shank, and wrap back towards our tail. We'll then grab some dubbing, here I'm using a light green, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals. Continue tightening and adding dubbing as needed, stopping with a little bit of room at the head of the fly. You can either make a flat body if you prefer, however, I like to make mine into more of a cigar shape, Next, we'll grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. This will help add some durability and segmentation to our dubbing. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind your wire and helicopter the excess free. We'll then grab some elk hair. Here I'm using olive, snip away a small clump and use a dubbing brush to remove all these small insulating hairs. Insert the hair into a hair packer this will ensure that all of our hair is the same length. Tap it lightly. Once complete, carefully remove from the hair packer, measure it to length, I like mine to be a bit longer than my hook, and secure it to the top of your hook shank. An easy way to do this is to start by taking a single loose wrap around your hair, followed by a few loose securing wraps, before cranking down and tightening it in place. Once you're assured that all your fibers are secured to the top of your fly, you can continue to add pressure and secure everything in place and wrapping it in between our tag ends. Pull all the fibers upwards and finish with your thread just behind your hook eye. Take a few wraps to push back your elk hair and whip finish to hold everything in place. 
We'll then grab a sharp razor and cut our tag ends away at about a 45 degree angle. And this is the X Caddis, a very popular dry fly, especially if there's a lot of caddis in your waters. And as always, if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be making a fly that catches fish and is excellent for the beginner tire. To start this pattern, we'll use some black vivas thread. Continue wrapping till you reach the bend of your hook. Now here we will build up a small thread dam. This will be useful in the next step. Grab some brown biots. We'll select two individual biots, placing them into a V-shape, each splaying outward. Measure these to be roughly the size of your hook shank, and transfer the measurement to the back of the fly. We will secure them tightly, wrapping back onto the thread dam that we created. This will help splay the tips of the biot outward, giving them a stonefly-like look. Further secure the biots by wrapping up toward the bead. This will start to build up our body. Cut the excess free and grab some brass wire. Here I'm using Brassy. Insert the wire into the slot of our bead, secure it, wrapping backwards towards the biots. Once completed, we'll wrap our thread forward, leaving it just behind the bead of our fly. We'll grab our Brassy wire and begin to wrap this forward in touching spirals. If you leave a gap in your wire, just as I've done here, there's no reason to worry about it. The fish don't care and will still happily take this pattern. However, by pulling your wire slightly backwards on each wrap, it's more likely to fall into place adjacent to the next one, creating a much more smooth finish. We'll continue wrapping our wire forward until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll grab a single piece of peacock curl, attach that to the head of our fly, securing tightly, returning our thread back to the bead. We'll begin to hackle this around the thorax towards the head of our fly. Once we reach the thread, we can secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, snipping the excess free. Whip finishing to complete this pattern. Not only does this pattern catch fish, but it also teaches you a lot of fundamentals about fly tying. If you thought about getting into it, or are just starting, this would be a great place to begin. And if you'd like to support the channel while gathering the materials you need, I have linked that in the description below. And I will see you in the next one. These flies will help you catch more fish this winter. To start this pattern, we'll grab some Vivas thread in white and secure it to our hook shank. We will then grab some flashaboo, here I'm using pearl. Secure a single strand to our hook shank and begin wrapping towards the bend of our hook. We'll continue wrapping well into the hook bend, at which point we'll reverse directions and begin building up a smooth transition towards the head of the fly. With this step complete, grab your flash boot and begin wrapping this in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure that we cover the entire thread base. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and snip the excess furry. To increase the fly's durability, as well as its shine, we'll add a small layer of UV resin. Here I'm using a thin bone dry. Once happy, secure with a UV light and grab some peacock curl. Select a single strand and secure it to the head of our fly. Once secure, we'll begin hackling our ostrich curl towards our thread, doing so in closed touching spirals. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. This is a simple fly that can be tied in small sizes. Additionally, its bright color allows it to be noticed. Midges are definitely a staple of the trout's diet in winter, and your fly box should have several of them. If you'd like to stock up, you can visit my website below to see all of our midges selection. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Most fishermen aren't using this productive fly. To start this pattern, we'll grab some uni thread in red. Here I'm using ADOT. Secure it tightly to your hook shank and snap the excess free. Grab yourself some lead free wire, jam it into the bead and secure the wire tightly to the hook shank. 
This will help prevent your bead from spinning around the hook. With your wire secured, helicopter free and secure a second piece of wire wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. Return your thread towards the middle of the hook shank and begin wrapping your lead free wire in closed spirals until you reach your thread. Secure by taking several thread wraps around your lead free wire and helicopter the excess free. We will then begin covering our lead free wire using our thread to create a thread dam. The lead free wire is there to add weight as well as reduce the number of thread wraps we have to take to build up a body. Once complete, secure your thread in place and snip the excess free. Grab some UV resin and paint this over the thread dam that we just created. Take your time to build up a nice even coat without adding too much at one time. Once happy, we'll secure in place with a UV light, adding one more layer of resin to build up some extra bulk. Once again, secure with a UV light, reattaching our thread at the head of the fly. I've now switched over to a 12 aught Vivis. Snap the excess free and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a reddish brown hair's ear, creating a dubbing noodle and creating a small buildup just in front of our resin. Next, we'll grab some grizzly saddle hackle, select two tips and place them in a V formation. We'll tie these directly in front of our dubbing, wrapping back towards the hook point. Take your time with this and reorient the wings as needed. Once happy, continue securing tightly, snip the excess free, grabbing a brown cape. Select a single feather, strip off the fibers and tie this onto the body of our fly. Secure tightly and snip the excess free. Next, we will create another dubbing noodle, wrapping up the body until we reach our bead, brushing it out to give it a nice buggy look. We will then begin hackling our feather forward in open spirals until we reach the head of the fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. And this is a variation of the sunken amp, a pattern that often gets overlooked by fishermen but is highly productive in the summer months. If you'd like to win this fly, like the video, subscribe, and comment hashtag flies below. This is an ultra realistic fly pattern that might just help you catch more fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, snap the excess free, securing the tag end back to the top of the hook shank. We'll continue securing the tag end on top of the fly well into the hook bend. At which point we'll reverse our thread's direction and grab some pheasant tail, stripping away three fibers, measuring them to be about half the length of your hook and securing them tightly to the back of your fly, carefully ensuring that the fibers remain on the upper section of your hook shank. With this complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction snip the excess free, and using a pair of tweezers to carefully maneuver our excess thread between our three feathers, securing it in place once complete. This step will help create separation in our tails. We'll then grab some extra small wire, here I'm using black, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping back towards our tails. With this complete, advance your thread slightly, then grab some more pheasant tail, secure it to the hook shank, once again, wrapping back towards the tail. We'll then use our thread to build up a transition towards the head of the fly. Grabbing our pheasant tail and wrapping it up the hook shank once complete. Doing so in close touching spirals until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure and snip the excess free. Cover up your tag ends and grab your wire and begin hackling it forward in closed touching spirals. This will help add durability and create a segmented look to our body. Continuing to do so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure tightly and helicopter the excess free. We can then whip finish, snipping our thread free and repositioning the hook. If you have a rotating vise, it's easier to do these next steps with the fly in an inverted position. Reattach your thread and create a thread base for our following steps. 
Grab some more pheasant tail fibers, securing them to the underside of our hook and wrapping back towards where we left off. We'll then grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a blend of natural and synthetic fibers in the colored hair's ear. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap this just in front of our pheasant tail. Grabbing some biots, once complete. Here I'm using brown. Use the biots to secure it at either side of your fly to create the legs, making them about the length of our body. Secure tightly and do the same to the other side. Snip the excess free. Create another dubbing noodle and wrap this just in front of our biots. Repeating these steps two more times. Also, we just reached the milestone of 140,000 subscribers. I'm amazed at the community that this channel has built and want to thank you all for following along. And as a small thank you, we'll be doing a giveaway in this video. The details will be listed in the comments below. Grab some monofilament wire and use a lighter to burn it, creating a set of eyes. Paint it over with some black UV resin and fix in place with a UV light. We'll carefully secure this with our thread to the underside of our fly taking diagonal wraps to help position it in place and make sure it's secured tightly. With this complete, we'll add a bit more dubbing to fill in our gap. Grabbing our pheasant tail, folding it over and securing just behind the eyes. Next, we'll grab some more dubbing. This time I'm using hair's ear in black. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this around the head of our fly, ensuring not to add too much to cover up our eyes. Once complete, fold over your pheasant tail and secure it just behind the eye of the hook. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything together. Snip your thread free and grab a pair of tweezers to give our legs a bit buckier look. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a realistic mayfly pattern. While it takes a lot of time, it looks great in the fly box. And as always, thank you all for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up a favorite of mine for fall brook trout and salmon. To start this pattern, we'll grab some black UTC and secure that to our hook shank. Cut the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of our hook. Next, we can grab some silver wire. Here I'm using brassy, securing it tightly to the back of the fly. As the body, you can use a gold or silver tinsel, but I like to use this flashier hollow tinsel. Secure this to the back of the fly. Once complete, we can start to build up the body. We want to create a nice smooth transition towards the head of the fly. Next, we'll put in a couple term whip finish. Set our thread aside. If you have a rotating vise, this makes things easier. However, it's not necessary. Simply wrap the tinsel forward up the body of our fly in touching spirals. Do so until you reach your thread. At this point, we'll secure tightly, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the tinsel free. We can then grab our silver wire and begin to wrap this in open spirals towards the head of the fly. You want to take your time to make sure that the wraps are evenly spaced. This step will add some additional durability to our tinsel and also give it a nice 3D look. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front and behind and helicoptering free. Next, we'll grab some yellow marabou, select a few fibers and measure them to be about one and a quarter hook shanks in length. Secure it tightly to the head of our fly and snip the excess free at an angle. Clean up the head a little bit and then grab a red marabou feather. Once again, we'll select a few fibers matching the length of our yellow feathers. Snip the excess free at an angle, clean up the head slightly, and then grab some yellow marabou to top it all off. Once again, securing this and snipping the excess free. 
We'll then take our time cleaning up any visible feathers towards the head of our fly. Once complete, we'll grab a whip finisher, securing everything in place, and then we'll add some UV resin. This will increase the durability as well as give it a nice smooth look. Once happy, we'll secure with the UV light and that is the Marabou Mickey Fin. These colors work very well for brook trout and salmon in the fall. If you want to try to win this fly, you can view the comments below for more details. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This pattern is over 140 years old and still catches fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some ultra thread in fluorescent green and snip the excess free. Continue wrapping till you reach the bend of your hook. Here we'll create a small build up of thread. Continuing to wrap our thread to the head of the fly, secure, and snip the excess free. Next we'll grab some fluorescent green UV resin. This one is my favorite and you can find it in the link below. Add a small drop to the thread buildup we just created and fix it in place with a UV light. We'll now switch our thread out to a black Vivas in size 16 aught, secure it to the hook shank, snap the excess free, and continue wrapping to the back of the hook. Grab some peacock curl, select a single strand and secure it to your hook shank. We'll wrap our thread forward, securing the peacock as we go. Once we reach the head of the fly, put in a few whip finishes, and if you have a rotary vise, set your thread to the side. We will now begin wrapping our peacock up the hook shank until we reach our thread. Using a rotary vise creates a nice clean body, however it's not necessary. If you want to make this fly more durable, I would suggest adding a wire to counter wrap. This will add some increased durability, however, I enjoy the look of it without it. Also, if you are part of our Discord community or would like to be, we're hosting a secret Santa event where people are exchanging flies, myself included. If you would like to be a part of this event, you can check for the link in the comments below to join our Discord community. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking wraps both in front as well as behind the peacock and snipping the excess free. Next, we'll grab a partridge feather, pull off all the fibers on one side of the feather, and snip the tip into a triangle. We'll use this triangle to secure it to the head of the fly, and then begin carefully hackling it around the head of our fly. Once happy, we'll secure the partridge feather in place, and snip the excess free. Clean up any exposed stem, wrapping your thread slightly back onto the partridge. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and grab some UV resin. Here I'm using bone dry to carefully paint over the head of our fly. And this is my variation of the black and peacock that I prefer to use. The partridge adds more movement in the water and the hotspot attracts attention. If you'd like to try this fly and support the channel, you can pick it up from my website below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is the fly pattern that you never knew you needed. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snip the excess free. Continue wrapping, laying down a thread base for our next steps. Whip finish and snip your thread free. Grab some brown, yellow, and tan foam, as well as a pen cap. Use the pen cap to mark out your foam and cut out the shape that it leaves indented, giving us a round patty. Add some super glue over the thread base and place your patty on the underside of the hook. Add some pressure to seat it in place topping it off with some more super glue. We'll then place down a brown patty on top of the bun and sandwich between the hook. Give it a squeeze to secure. We'll then add some more super glue, cut out of square of our yellow foam, placing this above the patty. Give it a squeeze and select a green feather. Add a drop of super glue and place a small amount of the feather carefully in the middle, adding a bit more as needed. Secure by adding another drop of super glue and placing a patty over top. Give everything a squeeze to secure it, trimming up the lettuce until you're happy with the results. Add a little more super glue, as well as another tan patty. Give the whole pattern a squeeze, and use your scissors to carefully round over the top. And this is the cheeseburger fly pattern. Yes, I've caught fish on this, but I typically use it as an indicator for brook trout. Learn how you can win this fly in the comments below, and also check out the video of me catching a brook trout on this. Subscribe for more, and I will see you 
in the next one. If you fish for trout, this is a must have fly. To start this pattern, we'll grab some vivas in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank. Snap the excess free and fix our bead in place with a lead free wire. Secure the lead free wire tightly and helicopter the excess free. Next, we'll build up a small thread dam behind our lead free wire and grab a piece of olive vinyl. Secure that just behind our lead free wire and wrap back towards the bend of our hook. Once complete, we'll reverse directions, further securing our vinyl wire and leaving a bit of room at the head of the fly. We can begin to wrap our vinyl wire forward in closed touching spirals. We'll continue to do so until we reach our thread. If you would like to win this fly, like the video, click subscribe, and comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the vinyl wire by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snip the excess free. We'll then grab some black hair's ear, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap that around the head of our fly, tightening the dubbing noodle as needed. And finally, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free, whip finish, and that is our finished fly. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be tying a maggot that can be used to catch anything from trout to panfish. To start, we'll grab some monofilament line, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping well into the bend of the hook. Set your line to the side and grab some clear thin skin. Cut it into a wedge and secure it to the top of the fly, wrapping back towards our line. Next, we'll create a dubbing loop, once again, wrapping back towards the tail. Set your dubbing loop aside and grab some waxworm colored dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this forward in closed touching spirals until we reach roughly the hook point, creating a transition in the process. We'll make a mix of hair's ear in natural and black, insert this into our dubbing loop, spin it up and brush it free. With that complete, we can begin wrapping it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. Secure and snip the excess free. Create another dubbing mix, this time with natural and brown hair's ear. Spinning up a dubbing noodle and wrapping it around the head of our fly. Take a couple securing wraps and brush everything out in a downward motion to give it a nice buggy look. Afterwards, fold over your thin skin and secure it tightly to the head of the fly, snipping the excess free. And grab your mono wire and begin wrapping this forward in open spirals, applying a significant amount of pressure in order to create a segmentation. Once we've reached our thread, we'll secure, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Use a Sharpie to color in your thread and whip finish to create a prominent head. Snip your thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a maggot that could represent anything from a caddis larva to a scud and even a wax worm. For all you fly tires out there, we're currently holding a competition on our Discord to see who can tie the best larva. The winner will get a $25 gift certificate and have their pattern featured on the channel. If you'd like to join in, check out the link in the comments to visit our server. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be tying a steelhead caddis. To start this pattern, we'll use some Vivas thread in black. Secure it tightly to our hook shank and snap the excess free. We'll then continue wrapping well into the bend of our hook to lay down a thread base for our next step, wrapping our thread forward once complete. We'll then grab some small olive wire, securing it to our hook shank and wrapping into the bend of the hook. Once complete, we will return our thread forward and grab some peacock hurl. We'll select about three feathers, secure them to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards our wire. 
turn our thread forward once more and grab some medium green vinyl. We'll secure it to the hook shank, wrapping it back towards our other materials. Bring our thread forward, we will then begin wrapping our vinyl wire forward and we'll do so in closed spirals, making sure that each additional wrap is touching the last, continuing to do so until we reach the thread. We can then secure, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will now fold our peacock over and secure it at the head of the fly. Snip the excess free and grab our olive wire to further secure the peacock and create a ribbing up towards the head of the fly. Take your time with this, allowing it to fall perfectly between the vinyl wire wraps that were just laid previously. This step gives it a nice buggy look. Secure, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess wire free. Next, we'll grab some peacock synthetic along with some black hairs here, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap this around the head of our fly, continuing to tighten your dubbing noodle as you wrap towards the head of the fly. Once complete, we'll brush everything out, giving it a nice buggy look. Pull the excess fibers free and whip finish to complete this pattern. Natural looking steelhead patterns are often overlooked, however, when the water is clear and the pressure is high, these can be highly successful. If you would like to win this fly, subscribe, like the video, and comment hashtag flies for your chance to win, and I will see you in the next one. This will likely land you your first fish on a dry fly this season. To tie it, we'll start off with some small black thread and securing it to our hook shank all the way to the bend of the hook. Once we reach the bend of the hook, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly, keeping your thread buildup as smooth and uniform as possible. Once we reach the head of the fly, we'll reverse our thread slightly and grab some grizzly saddle hackle. Select a single feather measured to the size of your hook, strip a few fibers free, and use this to secure it to your hook shank. Bring your thread back up to the hook eye and begin to hackle your feather forward until you reach your thread, typically about two to three turns. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush all our fibers upward using our thread to help hold it in place, beginning by wrapping back on it slightly and then looping around it as you would a parachute. Continue doing so until all the fibers stand upward. Next, we'll take our thread and carefully run it through the fibers to help spread them back out as well as increase the fly's durability. Finishing with your thread just in front of our tuft. Next, we'll grab a high-vis parapost, you're amusing fluorescent green, and secure this just behind our hook eye. And fold the material backwards using your thread to hold it in place. Once complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything together. Snip our thread free and cut your parapost to length. And this is the Hi-Viz Noceum Midge. It offers an incredibly thin profile. It's one of my go-to patterns when I see any midges or small flies emerging. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'll be tying one of my favorite overlooked flies. To start, we'll attach some black thread to our hook shank, secure it tightly, and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping just before the bend of the hook, and reverse your thread's direction back towards the hook eye. At which point we'll grab some brassy wire, here I'm using amber, secure it tightly to your hook shank, and wrap back towards the tail. Once complete, return your thread back to the head of the fly, and grab some more brassy wire, this time I'm using copper. Once again securing your copper wire to your hook shank, and wrapping back towards the bend of the hook. Once complete, return your thread forward, taking thread wraps to smooth out our body as we work our way to the hook eye. Whip finish if you have a rotary vise and set your thread to the side. We'll begin by grabbing our copper wire and using our vise's rotary function to carefully wrap it up the body, doing so in closed touching spirals and continue to do so until you reach your thread. To make sure you don't leave any gaps, one simple thing to do is to position your wire slightly backwards so that the previous wrap helps guide it in place. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, 
taking a couple thread wraps and helicoptering the excess free. Next, grab your amber wire and begin to wrap this forward and begin to wrap this forward in open spirals. This adds a little bit of texture and character to our body. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicopter the excess free. Secure your wires in place by wrapping back on them slightly and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a tan synthetic blend, create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this around the head of our fly. And brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and wrap back on the dubbing slightly, creating a base for our next step. We'll then grab a partridge feather, pull the fibers backwards and snip away a small section, leaving us with a small triangle that we can use as a tie-in point. Secure it to the head of the fly and use a pair of hackle pliers to begin to spin it around the head of our fly. We'll take two wraps, carefully positioning our second wrap in front of the previous. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. Use your thread to clean up the head section and pull any fibers back to ensure you don't trap them. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and paint over the head with some UV resin. This will add durability to our fly, as well as improve the look of our head section. And this is a wire body soft hackle. I like to use this color variation to represent caddis, and it works extremely well as a dropper tied behind a dry fly. The wire gives it just enough weight to sink, yet is light enough to flow in the current and not sink your dry fly. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is a must-have dry fly. To tie this pattern, we will use Vivas in 16 knot in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We can then grab some grizzly saddle feathers, selecting one whose fibers are a bit longer than our hook gap. Pull off some excess fibers and use that to secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping back into the bend of the hook. Once finished, we'll wrap forward, grabbing some peacock curl. We'll select about three fibers and tying them onto the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, we will return our thread to about one third down the hook shank and tie in some orange para post. Securing it tightly and pulling both strands up in order to create a post. To do this, we will lightly wrap our thread around the base and continue to do so until the post stands up straight. Once complete, we can wrap back down to the base and take some further securing wraps to ensure our post doesn't twist around the hook shank. We'll snip it to length and wrap our thread to the head of the fly. We can now begin to wrap our peacock curl up the body. I like to twist mine into a braid and then continue to wrap it up the body. We will do so in closed touching spirals, trying to prevent any of our parapost material from being trapped underneath. However, if you do trap some, it's easily picked free. Once we reach the head of the fly, we will secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will now begin to wrap our saddle hackle forward and we will do so in open spirals until we reach the head of our fly. At which point we can secure, taking thread wraps both in front and then pulling all the fibers back to build up a small head. With that complete, we will snip the excess free and cut our pair of posts to length. We will then whip finish to secure everything in place, and this is a high-vis Griffith gnat. It is a fantastic dry fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. Speaking of fly boxes, if you would like to help support the channel, you can visit my website to purchase flies, fly boxes, or other merchandise below. Thank you all so much for the support, and I will see you in the next one. 
we're going to be tying up one of the best variations of the band Squirmy Worm. We'll start with some hot pink thread. Snip the excess free, securing the bead in place using some lead free wire. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook. At which point we'll take a few wraps forward and grab some stretchy material. Here I'm using a rubber D-rib, however I would suggest using a stretchy dental band that I've linked in the comments. Create a loop with your material and secure it to the back of the fly. Make sure your loop secured tightly by taking securing wraps both in front as well as behind your loop and continue towards the head of the fly. Snip one of your excess bands free, once again continuing towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our rubber material backwards, take a few securing wraps towards the head of the fly, and once again create a loop in our rubber band, using your thread to secure it lightly in place at first. This way, by pulling on the opposite end, we can shrink the loop to the size we're looking for. Once happy, secure in place with your thread and continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook. Snip your excess free and use your thread to smooth out the body. Finishing at the head of the fly. Hold everything in place by whip finishing, snip your thread free, and paint over everything with some UV resin to add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix in place with the UV light and grab some spare wire. Use the wire to string it through the two loops that we just created and open up the loops at the end using a pair of tweezers. Next, we'll grab some squirmy wear material, here I'm using pink, insert it through our loop and begin pulling the wire to help draw the squirmy wear material through the two loops. They should be quite tight to hold it in place. Once complete, remove the wire, snip the squirmy wear material to length, and this is an improved squirmy worm, suggested by Tim from the Trout and Feather. I've linked his full video in the comments below. It's an excellent pattern that promotes a lot of movement in the water and also can be replaced if the fish chew it up. I would highly suggest giving it a try. And as always, if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying a Rainbow Warrior. We'll start off with some Vivas 16 knot in white. However, I recommend you use red Secure your thread to the hook shank, snapping the excess free. We'll wrap back up to our tungsten bead, insert a lead free wire, and secure it tightly. Once complete, we'll helicopter free and build up a small thread dam to keep our lead free wire in place. We can then wrap to the back of the fly and grab some pheasant tail. Before we start, we will make a small build up of thread on the back of the fly and then grab three fibers of pheasant tail. We'll secure that to the back of the fly and the small thread base allows the pheasant tail to splay out. We will then further secure the pheasant tail to the hook shank and pull the excess free. We will then grab some silver wire, here I'm using brassy. Insert that into our bead and secure it wrapping back towards the tail of our fly. and then wrap back up right before our lead free wire. We'll grab a piece of mylar, securing it to the hook shank and wrapping back once again to the tail of our fly. At this point, we can wrap our thread all the way up to the head of the fly and begin to wrap our mylar forward. We'll do so in closed spirals, slightly overlapping the last wrap. Once at the head of the fly, we'll take securing wraps both in front as well as behind our mylar and snip the excess free. We'll repeat the steps with our silver wire, except this time we will wrap it forward in open spirals. Once again securing and helicoptering the excess free. We will then grab some dubbing. Here I've made a nice custom mix of some tans, pink, purple, and blue. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap that tightly around the head of our fly. Whip finish. Because I didn't use a red thread, I grabbed some Vivas. This is a body quill in a nice red shiny color. We'll attach that around the head of our fly, creating a nice little hot spot. Details on how to win this fly are in the comments below. This fly works particularly well with rainbow trout. However, it is a great attractor pattern for just about all species of trout. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.
This is one of the world's most used and successful fly patterns. To tie it, we'll grab some Vivas in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We will then insert some lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place, securing it tightly and helicoptering the strands free. We will then grab some silver brassy wire, insert this into our bead, and begin wrapping it well into the bend of our hook. Once complete, we will begin building up a body transition with our thread. One simple way to do this is return your thread towards the head of the fly and then start wrapping back towards your wire, stopping just before you reach where you started with your thread. Repeating this process will make a nice transition towards the head of our fly that you can make as bulky or as slim as you'd like. Once we're happy with our transition, we will grab our wire and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to make sure the wraps are evenly spaced. Once complete, we will secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess free. Grab yourself some peacock hurl. I'll select two strands and secure this to the head of the fly. Securing them by wrapping slightly back on the body and returning our thread to the bead. We will begin wrapping our peacock around the head of the fly until we reach our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front of the peacock as well as behind and snipping the excess free. And this is the zebra midge. If you would like to support the channel and pick up a few, you can visit my website here to see this and all the variations of it I like to use. And if you'd like a chance to win this fly, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment below hashtag flies. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. If you fish for trout in the winter, this fly is a must have. We'll start off with some olive thread, snap the excess free, grabbing some brassy wire. Here I'm using chartreuse. Insert the wire into our glass bead and secure it tightly. Continue securing our wire to the hook shank well into the bend of the hook. If you want to see the exact materials used in any of these patterns, you can check them out in the comments below. Once we reach the back of the fly, we'll reverse directions and start building up a thread transition towards our bead. Next, grab your wire and begin to wrap this in open spirals towards our thread, ensuring that each wrap is evenly spaced. Secure the wire by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. To increase durability as well as shine of this pattern, you can coat the back of it in UV resin. Once happy, fix in place with a UV light and grab some chartreuse crystal flash. Fold over the flash, creating two or four loops, whatever your preferences are, and secure them just behind the bead. Ensure you secure it tightly and snip the excess free. So we'll grab some olive dubbing. Here I'm using one with some UV fibers. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it just in front of our crystal flash wing. Once happy, secure everything in place by whip finishing and snip your thread free. Finally, brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. I like to use this fly both in the winter as well as the spring months. If you don't tie and want to try this out for yourself, you can pick it up from my website below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up a marabou variation of the classic Steve Carey's Black Ghost. Now we're going to start with a flat black thread. I like to use Ultra Thread 140. Give ourselves a little bit of space for the head of the fly. Snip that free and then continue all the way to the end of the shank. And then we're going to grab ourselves a yellow feather. I like to grab about a quarter to a half of an inch. Make sure that's nice and even and then tear that off. Measure that out to be about a quarter of our hook shank in length and then secure it to the back of the hook. Once that's good and secure, we can start to wrap forward a little bit, grab our scissors and then snip that off at an angle. Snipping it off at an angle is going to allow us to create a more seamless transition when we're building up our body. We'll grab ourselves some brassy wire in silver. Now this is typically tied with a tinsel, however I really like the durability that these brass wires offer and the ribbing looks quite good as well. So we're going to secure that to the back of the hook and once that's finished we can start to create a seamless body transition to the head of the fly. 
Now, if you want, you can use a piece of yarn or something of the sort to build up your body by attaching it to the back. However, I like the simplicity of just using my flat black thread. Once that's finished, we'll grab our wire and start making some even wraps towards the head of the fly. Secure that wire down. I like to take some thread wraps both in front as well as behind because it makes helicoptering off the wire afterwards much easier. With our wire removed, we're going to grab some white marabou. Now I like to use the tips because these offer a lot more action in the water. Measure that to be about one and a half times our hook shank and length. Once we're happy with our length, we're going to secure that. And snipping off the excess once again at an angle. Next, I like to start to build up the head of my fly, but I don't get too carried away here because we still have one more material to add. We're going to go ahead and invert our fly if you have a rotating vise. If not, it's not a big deal. And grab some more of our yellow feather, about a quarter to a half inch in length. And then we're going to use that to create a throat of our fly. I like to measure mine just short of our hook point snip off our excess nice and close. From here we're going to clean up the head of the fly, make sure no yellow or white is showing, and finish off building off our head using our whip finisher. That way we don't have too much excess thread on the fly. Once we're happy with that we're going to make sure it's nice and secure, give it a little tug, and then snip it free. We're going to burn off any remaining fibers that we have at our head of the fly, grab some UV resin and apply our first coat. Now this first coat sinks into the thread wraps a little bit, creates a nice even transition, hit it with a UV light, securing everything in place, and then we'll come back in for a second coat. This second coat smooths everything out, it makes the head nice and even. Hit it once again with the UV light, and there you have it, that is a marabou variation of the classic black ghost. I'd highly encourage you to give it a try. If you don't tie yourself, but you'd still love to try this pattern, you can go down to my website, fill out the custom order form, and I'd be happy to send some your way. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be tying an open wound fly suggested by our Discord admin. To start this pattern, we'll attach some black Vivas thread to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. We will then insert a small lead-free wire in order to hold our bead in place, secure tightly, and helicopter the excess free. We will then wrap our thread back just before the bend of the hook. Grab a turkey tail, selecting three fibers, and secure them tightly to the back of the fly. Once complete, we can snap the excess free and wrapping back towards the bead. We will then grab some silver brassy wire, insert that into our bead, securing it tightly to our hook shank and wrapping back towards the tail. We will then begin to build up a body transition towards the head of the fly. Once finished, we can begin wrapping our wire forward and we will do so in open spirals, keeping the wrap spaced as evenly as possible. Once we reach our thread, we will secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We will now grab some salmon colored UV synthetic dubbing and create a small hot spot just behind the bead of our fly. We want to make this dubbing ball as tight as possible. For this next step, in order to give it an extra buggy look, we will create what's known as a dubbing loop. Inserting some black hair's ear, spinning it, and using a tool to brush it out. With the dubbing loop complete, we will begin to wrap it around the head of our fly, and as you can see, it gives it an extra buggy look. Secure tightly, snipping the excess free. 
Once finished, brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. And that is the open wound. Although I've never personally fished it, it's easy to see that this will be highly successful. If you would like to make fly suggestions for the channel, you can visit our Discord server below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to tie one of my favorite jigs to catch lake trout through the ice. It also has a secret that most people don't know about. We'll start with black UTC and attach that to our hook shank. Continue back to the bend of the hook and grab some olive marabou. We'll measure it to be about one and a quarter length of our hook shank. Transfer the measurement and secure it to the back of the jig, taking tight thread wraps ensuring that it won't pull free. In order to build up the body, we'll fold back the marabou, wrap towards the head of the jig, holding the marabou back over and securing it in place. Wrap back towards the tail of our jig, trying to trap all the feathers in the process. Snip the excess free and grab some olive flashaboo. We'll tie in four strands to one side, fold the extra over, securing it onto the other side. We'll measure out our flashaboo to be a bit longer than the marabou and snip the excess free. We'll then grab some olive estaz, pull the tips free, and secure that to the back of our jig. We will then begin wrapping to the head of our jig. In doing so, we want to ensure we cover any visible olive feathers in the process. We'll then wrap our olive estaz forward, brushing the fibers back as we go to ensure we don't trap any in the process. Secure tightly to the head of your jig by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some olive silicone silly legs, attach this to the collar of our jig, securing it tightly in place. Once complete, we will snip the excess tag end free and then snip it to length, roughly about half the length of our marabou. Repeat this process, tying one in on the other side. I like to use my whip finisher to add a prominent band to the head of the jig. Doing so will increase the durability and hold everything in place. In addition to this, I will also add some head cement, allow it to dry, and then paint it over with some UV resin. This will help prevent any fish teeth from getting in and cutting our final thread wraps. This particular pattern doesn't work well on a fly rod, but instead is used for conventional and ice fishing jigs. If you'd like me to tie one up for you, you can visit my website down below and I'd be happy to send some your way. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Many believe that this highly successful fly pattern should be banned. To tie it, we'll start off with some pink UV beads and use a lighter to heat up the hook. Grab your bead and pull it in an upward motion to adhere it to the top of the hook. We'll grab some Vivas thread, here I'm using white, secure it to the hook shank and snap the excess free. Next, we'll tie in a small bit of egg yarn, folding the ends over and securing it tightly to the hook. Snip it to length, whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip the excess thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. While many believe that the lack of natural materials should deem this pattern banned, eggs are a natural forage and highly successful at catching fish. Let me know your thoughts on the matter in the comments below.